and we are live. Good night, good evening, good morning, good afternoon to some of you, you know, no matter where you are in the world. It is I again, Minister Kevin L.A. Ewing, with another provocative, mind-challenging uh, teaching. <clears throat> and as you would see there as my topic, false and filthy dreamers. False and filthy dreamers. Let me ensure that I'm on my social media sites so that I could get started with this awesome, awesome teaching. As usual, we're going to wait for this to hit that 500 mark here on my uh, here on my uh, yards uh, what's this thing stream yard <laughs> thing and then we're gonna go into this uh, very very powerful uh, challenging teaching I hope you guys had a wonderful day I know some of you like here in the Bahamas most of you are going to bed at 11 24 p.m that's what time it is here in my neck of the woods but uh, as usual man I, I just love teaching so whenever I'm I'm prompted by the Spirit of God I just grab my, my little my small little pad here and just go with a teaching that I had there for a while but just was waiting to be led to, to, to teach on it okay I don't know about you but I love these little impromptu uh, teachings and uh, I just enjoy them. Uh, before I get started, I just want to share this with you. And as you would not have been speaking about this a lot lately, and the only reason why I'm doing it is because it has literally been in my spirit over and repeatedly, and I cannot express to you enough. If you come from a family that is riddled with cancer, riddled with chronic diseases, riddled with addiction, Riddle with with it, sorry, riddle, sorry, riddle with having children out of wedlock, divorce, or any negative pattern. I cannot stress it enough. At some point, you need to enter a fast and break the spiritual contract that is enabling the forces to enforce these ills in your life and by extension, your family members. I cannot emphasize that enough. Please do not become the next candidate for these vices, these ills, okay? They don't happen by accident. They don't happen by chance. So I am, I am literally begging you, if you believe in God, if you believe in Satan, if you believe in the spiritual world, and if you truly believe like I've been teaching you, that the spiritual world to take the course of our natural world, then it would be wise on your end to challenge these inevitable things that will happen to you spiritually. Prayer and fasting is key. I told you my mother's side is the, of the family, uh, high blood pressure. Uh, my father's side, cancer, heart disease. But I am equipped with the knowledge that these things excuse me, didn't randomly pick my family and to say we'll just descend on them, not according to spiritual laws. So somebody at some point in the bloodline, ignorantly, or even knowingly, but for the most part ignorantly, invited these things. So I'm saying to you, out of all of the teaching I'm constantly pouring into you, be proactive. Do not wait until you go to the doctor because your blood pressure was elevated and after doing their blood works and so on, you discovered you have cancer, even though you were doing everything to avoid it physically. But you never looked at the spiritual implications of it to deal with it from there. All right. I told you when I did my fast, that was something that I, I attack. I attack heart disease. I attack every chronic, any disease, any ill that was brought into the bloodline because I know the rules. I challenged them, I asked God to break those covenants to destroy them. I revoked them, divorced myself and my family. From this point forward, my family would not be participants of these things. But that's not going to automatically happen because you're a Christian. We had 402, okay? We got 98 more and then we'll start. But I just want to 
advise you if you come from a family that you know, you know your family members were involved in the occult. You know this. You were involved in the occult. You know that the senior members and even younger members of your family were involved in secret societies, fraternities, uh, sorority, whatever. Wherever they made pledges, wherever they made covenants, they were pledging and they were covenanting to deities. They may not be aware of it, but <laughs> ignorance is no excuse to the law. If they did it, unknowing to them, they would have given right to powers that's going to dominate the bloodline. Please listen to me carefully. Okay? The old people say, take my foolish advice. <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay? You need to address these things. Do not, do not sit down waiting for illness to visit you. Do not sit down waiting for the bank to repossess your home after you saw all of your siblings who started off well in life and lost everything in the mid part of their lives and they got to start all over again. Those things are not happening by accident. They are spiritually programmed based on family members being tricked into seeking solution from deities other than the God of Abraham. And that is where these forces took advantage of their ignorance and now dominate the family by ensuring that these negative patterns remain. And like I said to you in my last teaching, uh, the more these things are not challenged, the greater they become in strength because their power or strength is fueled by the ignorance of the family members. You could never say, if you listen to me all the time, it, it, in fact, I would seem repetitive to you. But the only reason why is because I'm trying to inculcate that into your understanding. Okay? I'm trying to get you to understand, to unhinge you from focusing on what you see and look at what is very, very severe, and that is what you don't see. And you have to challenge that from a spiritual perspective. Go on a fast to break, to break the covenants, not just challenge the altars. The altars are just the places that the covenants are made. The altars are just the places where the spirits are, the evil forces. However, they can achieve nothing from that altar unless an agreement was established. It is through that agreement, it is through that agreement that is causing these negative things to happen. It is the things that your parents said over your life in their hate and their bitterness that's dictating the course of your life negatively, all right? And we go through the laws all the time, and the purpose of that is so that you begin to, to implement those laws to overcome this. I'm not going to be a candidate of a heart attack. I'm not going to be the candidate of sugar, diabetes, whatever. I'm not going to be the candidate of cancer. I'm not going to die from liver cancer. I'm not going to look free and leave this world looking so tragic. I'm not going to do that. I'm not having the knowledge that I have and knowing that I can challenge that now so that don't ever happen to me. Take advantage of it. Okay? For those of you that's just coming on, I would really appreciate if you stayed where you're coming, where you're watching from. I very much appreciate that because I always tell you I like to see how far these messages are, are reaching all over the world. I really, really appreciate that. Okay, so we had 537, and now we're going to get into our teaching tonight. And our teaching tonight, this topic is called False and Filthy Dreamers, which the Bible speaks uh, extensively. And uh, is very the Bible is very serious about these type dreamers, and they are in fact dreamers. So the definition of a false or a filthy dreamer are the same. A false dreamer as well as a filthy dreamer, they're the same meaning. And that is, these are uh, agents of the devil, of Satan, who were ordained by Satan. They're not popping up haphazardly. They were ordained to come just like a false prophet. In fact, the Bible, this is so interesting because the Bible put a false or a filthy dreamer in the same category as a false prophet. 
and all of their goals are the same. And what is that minister doing? They are to deceive and ultimately mislead people from God or from his word. That's their job. However, they come just like the false prophet with all of the God type attire to convince those who just look at the surface to run with it. But in journeying or with them or following them, you will quickly learn if you care to notice that the things that they believe in, the things that they subscribe to, the things that they teach or preach is pulling you away from God. But this is not happening by chance. This is not happening by accident. They're not just being facetious. No, as we're about to read, according to scripture, they were ordained before time, not by God though, but by the enemy, that this is my crew for this particular dispensation in time for them to go forward now, pretending to be men and women of God, pretending to be prophetic uh uh, prophetic people in terms of dreams and visions and so on. But as we're about to read, you're going to see that the, the basis and the foundation or the infrastructure in which they stand on is not of God. But they're not the only ones. They're a part of a bigger group who has specific uh, assignments to fulfill the one goal, though. The one goal is to pull people away from the God of Abraham. I thought that this teaching was very much necessary because it's only going to bring more credit to what I try to do with you as people that I try to teach the word of God to. And that is to always get you not to focus on me, but to focus on the word of God that I'm not adding to or taking away from. I'm giving it to you just how it is in the Bible. God has given me a gift of teaching to now break those scriptures down in a way that you and even a child could understand it. So ultimately, like my goal for every one of my recordings, is that you walk away with a complete understanding to the extent that now you want to make what you understand practical, but you're doing it the godly way. I'm never going to add to it. I'm never going to take, I'm never going to fluff it and dress it up. And I'm never going to ask you or require you to do things with the word of God that has nothing to do with God. So it brings us to this point now. What is the difference between a true dreamer? A true dreamer would be one who is literally having visions from God, dreams from God, and a false dreamer. What is the one distinct difference between these two? Very simple. A false dreamer, like I said earlier, intent, goal, objective, is to ultimately pull you away from God. Ultimately. But the way that they're going to do it, initially, is not going to seem that way. Because when they come in, they're going to come in just like you. They're going to look just like you. They're going to be just like you. And they're going to tell you they serve the same God just like you. But give them some time and you will see where they now begin to shift scripture by adding, polluting, contaminating the word of God. A true dreamer will never in this life, and a true dreamer would be dreams which is coming from God, where they say God said, in this particular dream, a true dreamer will never in this life tell you anything as it relates to a dream or even its interpretation that is going against the word of God. A true dreamer will never add to the word of God. A true dreamer, and I say true dreamer, this is the person whom God has literally spoken to in a vision, in a dream, in a prophecy, whatever. But God is saying to them, it will be exactly what the word says, or you could reference it and find examples in the word to validate or to support it. So let me explain that to you. A true dreamer said, okay, Kevin, I had a dream about you. 
and God showed me in the dream, and I've had people told me this in my earlier days before I started ministering, and I see you ministering all over the world. I was at a service many years ago, had to have been over 10 years now, where I was invited, well, actually my pastor at the time and I were invited to this uh, anniversary of a particular pastor. So when clergy came, they sat us on on the pulpit area at the rear of the, the actual pulpit where the guy was ministering. So the actual uh, pastor of the church was sitting down in the congregation at the very front while you know people were coming up there and you know singing his praises and so on. So when all of the preaching and everything was done, he got up and he put his hand over the pulpit and he said, before I do anything, now he does not know me. He knows my pastor very well, but he doesn't know me because I not too long started this church. He doesn't know anything of Kevin. So when he put his hand up, before he did anything, he said, I have to make one thing clear because the Lord has spoken to me while I was sitting down. He turned around and he pointed at me and he called me to the front. He says, come here, sir. He said, the Lord told me to tell you, he has called you to minister and teach his gospel all over the world. Now, at this point, I was not teaching, I was not ministering, and I had no, no dreams of doing these things. I was just a, 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 a believer of Jesus Christ uh, 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 at my church at that time. I said, it wasn't long before I started that church. I had come from another church at this church. He said, don't you don't ever have to worry about finances. The Lord will take care of you. He said, I'm seeing you in India. I'm seeing you all over these places. Another time, I was at another church again. My pastor was invited. This is like about three months apart. And this pa the pastor who invited us, he's ministering. And this is how all of the prophecies to me is always in this manner, where the preacher would be preaching. He's not prophesying, he's preaching but he will stop his preaching and come and seek me out. So this pastor was preaching. This is a different pastor. This is a different service. This was a couple months later. The pastor stopped his preaching. He walked down the aisle where my pastor and myself was, and he called. He said, come here, young man. Stand right here in this aisle. Now, prior to this, about a week before this happened, well, actually, this happened on a Friday night, the Monday before this Friday night service that I didn't even know we were going to because my pastor had called me last minute to uh, to ask him, to ask me to, you know, go with him to this place. Anyway, I had this dream, and in the dream, I was literally lying on my back, laying on my back. And the sky had the map of the entire world, okay? And I'm looking, because it was so huge, I'm looking for the Bahamas. So I'm, I'm traveling down the Panhandle of Florida, which I know the Bahamas would be right there, but there was no Bahamas. I said, this is strange. There are no islands, no Bahamas at all. So I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I said, this is not right. However, I saw the words, the Bahamas written in bold black letters. Now this was crazy because these, these, this, the, 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 the writing of the Bahamas wasn't even where the Bahamas is located. It was almost as if it was in the Gulf of Mexico area. Anyway, while I'm looking at this particular map of the world, the, 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 the biggest part of this map is South America. And I could see Venezuela, Caracas. I could see uh, all the way from, from, uh, uh, Venezuela, Colombia, and all that other stuff, all the way down to Argentina and the, the Falkland Islands and all of that. I could see all of this bowl. Like, like every the center of this map was South America. Woke up out of the dream. So going back to this pastor now, he calls me out. And again, this is how you know these dreams are true from God. And he says to me, like every one that has prophesied to me, he said, I see you traveling the entire world teaching the word of God. This guy don't know me from Adam. He said, and you're going to be very wealthy, but your wealth is going to assist you in doing what God has called you to do. This was his words to me. He pulls back and he looks at me. He said, in fact, I see you up and down South America. I don't know why. 
all of, I'm seeing you teaching all over South America. So when he said this, I immediately looked at my pastor because I shared the dream with him. I had it that Monday night, that Wednesday, I told him about it when, when I met at, when we met at Bible study night. So this guy is telling me what I saw spiritually. He's confirming to me. All right. Now, this is a true dreamer. This is a, when I say true dreamer, a true dreamer in this teaching, I is speaking about those who are speaking on behalf of God, just like a prophet. This isn't just regular dreams. These are dreams where they say, God is saying this, God is doing that. Now, a false dreamer now, like I said to you earlier, a false dreamer is one who would have the cosmetics of the things of God, but the things they are requiring of you to do is not of God. For example, a dream would say, I had a dream about you, and I see where the enemy is planning something against you spiritually. But I hear God says to get two sticks and put it in the shape of a cross and put it on the right and the left side of your home. And now anoint your driveway and spin around four times. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no. All these scriptures in the Bible, and you're telling me, God is telling you that I must conjure up spells to protect me. See, this is now where you unhinge yourself that I respect this man of God so much that I'm willing to dismiss all of the scriptures of protection and go on this this thing that he made up that nowhere in the Bible I could find reference of it. So you see what I'm saying? A, tr a false dreamer is one who will tell you they had a dream about you or whomever else, but it doesn't make sense as it because you're going to use the word of God and how God operates according to his word. And if that is not matching with the scriptures, I'm not listening to you. You're an uncircumcised Philistine. You are an agent of Satan. Because it's ultimately, like I said, a false dream is to ultimately to deceive you with the sole intent of pulling you away from God. Pulling you away from the things of God. Right? Okay, good. Now let's look at some scripture now. We're about to put some meat on the bones of this thing, okay? So let's go to Jude. Jude. And it's still going to be difficult to find it because it's just before Revelation and it is only one chapter. <laughs> okay, so let's go to Jude chapter one. You will find no other chapters in Jude. Okay, I'm loving this already. All right, Jude chapter one. All right, and we're going to read from verse one to verse 13 so we can get the full context and understanding of this because we're going to see where these dreamers are going to be discovered and exposed. So the Bible is giving us, excuse me, an advanced look as to how do we determine them. Okay, so Jude chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. This is who he's writing this letter to. He says, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly, listen to what he's saying now, he said, it was, it was upon me that you must earnestly contend for the faith. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. Which was delivered unto the saints. Faith here being the word of God. You must contend for it because there are some agents that he's about to speak about that's going to come to fight you. But they're not coming to fight you physically because you're doing well in life or you're educated or they're jealous of you. No. They're coming to snatch the word of God for you because they want to implement now their own philosophies, their own ideologies, their own doctrines. So verse 3 of Jude chapter 1, he says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write to you, 
to write unto you of the common salvation. It was needful for me to write. I had to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Listen to verse 4. Okay? For there are certain men, uh -huh, crept in unawares, crept in where though? Amongst the people of God. Amongst churches. There are certain men, and the word certain there speaks of particular, uh, assigned. These are not... Uh, Anybody, this this is a certain group of people. A for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Oh, so in so much words, with the scripture saying this is a selected hand group that Satan has chosen and trained. Now we're going to send you into the churches, okay? And amongst the people of God. And you're going to be like them, talk like them, dance like them, give riddles like them. You're going to do all of that until they're completely comfortable with you. But you have an agenda. And the agenda is to defile, pollute, contaminate, dilute the word of God. So successfully that when you introduce the doctrine of devils, they will abandon God and follow you. I love in this already. You all, better, you all better listen tonight. Listen to me carefully, okay? Verse 4 again, Jude 1. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old or in time past, they were ordained, commissioned specifically to this condemnation or this evil. There are ungodly men. Listen what I'm going to do now turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, wickedness, shameful, lustful, demonic acts. Just like a lot of these uh, so-called African pastors, I've been posting a lot of them in my Words of Wisdom group, where a lady will come up here for deliverance, so he got to kiss her to suck the demon out. Where you see the guy who's a pastor picking up a man and body slamming him or throwing, throwing, throwing him into the chairs. Even though the scripture says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Even though Jesus never left the pattern in place to kiss a woman to take the, well, well how come you only kissing the woman? How come you didn't kiss the guy to take the demon on him? Again, you would buy into what they're doing when you don't know the scriptures because you have no nothing to measure what they're doing with as to the truth of whether or not they're doing truth or false stuff. All you're saying is this, 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 the man, the God, the great prophet. So he says here, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of all ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, whose job is turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and, and ultimately doing what? And denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So he says, ultimately, they're going to come in and they, they're going to fit the profile externally of true dreamers, true prophets, true whatever they call themselves. But the scriptures is giving an insight of what they're all about internally, the part that you cannot see. Verse 5, I will therefore put you in remembrance. Though ye once knew this, how that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroy them that believe not. Now he's giving examples now. And he's saying, these examples will reflect verse 4. Meaning that what I'm about to give you in examples didn't happen by chance. The same strategy was used back then. We're going to send in men, they crept in unawares, pretending to be just like you Hebrew people or whoever, but ultimately we came here to change the entire game. It's not going to look that way initially. It's not going to look that way initially. 
And, and this is why you see me pound on stuff like seed sowing. I pound on stuff like covering. I pound on these stuff like miracle cloths because this they are here. That's what I'm saying to you. They are here already. So they came in already doing the things that Christians do. Now they introduce them. What are they doing? You don't really need the Bible because this miracle pen, all you have to do is write with this and the Holy Spirit is going to guide your hand. Glory be to Jesus. You don't need uh, the Bible anymore for healing. Drink this concoction. All you need to do is put a scarf around you and the Holy Spirit will rest upon you. They are here already. I'm talking to somebody. Watch this. I will therefore, verse 5 of Jude 1, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people of the land of Egypt, afterwards destroyed them that believed not. Why did they believe? Why after he saved them? Because someone crept in unawares. Someone introduced a doctrine. But how, they didn't just introduce it. They had, to, they had to convince you to get rid of yours first by introducing convenient stuff to go by. Don't listen to the Kevin with all these rules and principles and ordinance, man. That's too much work. I got a vial of oil here. If you give me $200, the Lord says, all who have 200, you can have this oil. And this oil is going to fix whatever is wrong in your life. Verse 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate. This is interesting because now he gave us a human example of how these folks could creep in unawares. Now he's given us an angelic example, a supernatural one, where someone, which was Satan, in, in, in heaven, crept up on the angels and convinced them. The Bible says one third of the innumerable angels sided with Satan and was kicked out of heaven. So in verse 5, he gave us a humanistic example, and now he's giving us a spiritual example in verse uh, 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, first estate meaning that their estate was in heaven, but left their own habitation, which was heaven, he had reserved in everlasting chains under darkness. So God says because of what they did, he has chained these particular angels, Reserved for the day of judgment, but guess where he put them? Not in darkness. Listen to the scripture. Under darkness. Read the scripture. Don't assume what it means. Read it. So they are there. I think they call this place Tartarus or something like that. As I'm speaking to you right now, these angels, okay, are reserved under darkness until the day of judgment. Scripture. So he's given us two examples. He's given us a spiritual one and he's given us a natural one, right? Reserve in an everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Listen to verse 7. He's given us another example. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities upon them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set for an example suffering the vengeance of God. So what is the underlying tone in these three examples? The underlying tone goes right back to verse 4. What does it say? For there are certain men crept in. On, you weren't aware of their agenda. You weren't aware of the real reason why they showed up there. You weren't aware that when they was telling you this false dream, this false prophecy, you didn't know that their plan and strategy, like their, like their uh, colleagues, was to deceive you initially with the ultimate intent and in pulling you away from what you know to be the things of God, to get you so hooked on these theatrics and seed sowing and all this nonsense that have nothing to do with God. You think those people who, who were led astray, you think they planned it. You know what? I'm going to be saved. I'm going to get saved at 25. I'm going to spend three years as a devoted believer of Jesus Christ. And in my seventh year, I'm going to allow myself to be deceived and just go doing nonsense. No, 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 no. You had strategists, satanic strategists that roll up in there. And they was doing the church dance, and they did the church dance too. They said hallelujah, and we say hallelujah too. And they right in there, they were submissive. They were submissive to pastor, but they had a, an agenda. 
And the strategy was you go in there, you act like them, you dress like them, you pretend to be like them, but ultimately, piece by piece, you deceive them. You begin to add to the scriptures. You begin to take away. No, we don't have to do this. You don't have to do that here. No, God, this is a new age now. You you can have, do whatever you want to do because God isn't looking petty like that, you know. Then all this time, it seems so convenient and so nice. The next thing you know, you you running on a whole doctrine that have nothing to do with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They Listen to me carefully, okay? They are here today. So he says here, verse 7, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Listen carefully. Listen carefully, verse 8, because this is where this teaching comes in. Likewise. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now you know me, right? I don't rush scripture. I need to understand what I'm reading here. Likewise, what does the before we go anywhere else, what does the word likewise? What's the meaning? Well, the word likewise means something that is similar to the word likewise. And in fact, I wrote some points down here. The word likewise means something that is similar to or something that is equal. All right. So when you use the word likewise, you're saying it's just like this over here. Okay, now that we understand that, let's read. So verse 8 says, likewise are all these filthy dreamers. Whoa! Whoa! Remember what I told you now in my beginning. Filthy dreamers, you'll see filthy, that will prefix dreamers here. And there's some other scriptures we're going to go to that's going to use the word false dreamers, but they both have the same meaning. Okay? And all these are, are men and women who have these false dreams. Most of them are lies coming from their heart with the intent to deceive and ultimately mislead you from the word of God. But the scripture in verse 8 here is saying, likewise, likewise, what, what are you comparing them that are similar to? Well, let's go back from verse 4 to verse 7. He's saying that, these men, let's go back to verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of all ordained to condemnation. They are ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, wickedness, and denying, this is what they're going to do ultimately, denying the only Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Then he dropped down to verse 8. Likewise, th these men who I just told you about are similar to or just like or equal to filthy dreamers. Taking my time tonight. I don't know, Rush. I'm a retired man. <laughs> I don't have to go to bed for, for nothing tomorrow. I'm retired. <laughs> I ain't gonna rush. You all hear this, right? Like, they are similar to, that's what likewise means. They are equal. They are on the same level, with the same agenda, with the same plan, with the same strategy. Scripture. Scripture. Remember me, you know, recently... I've been telling you about these prophetic drunk junkies, prophetic, prophetic junkies, as well as dream interpretation junkies, as well as deliverance junkies. Well, these people will be ideal to become enslaved to such people. They're not interested in the word of God. They don't, they, listen, I tell you, there are some people who want to talk with me. But the only reason why they want to talk to me is because they want meanings of a dream, right? And sometimes when I'm talking, they don't give me a chance to talk. They cut me right off and just rudely go on with their foot. Why? See, because they're not really interested in the word of God. That's not their objective. They're not really interested in, in the things of Christ and laws. No, I believe this dream, me and my boyfriend's cheating on me, okay? Are you going to get saved and give your life to Christ and hope that God give you the right man so you don't make a mistake and having a baby with somebody that you're never supposed to be with and they have to go through 18 years of child support and all this other stuff? No, they're not interested. Kevin, you can't hear. They're not interested in that. What they want to do is sit you down for the next 30 hours to reveal a bunch of dreams to you that they have no intent, no matter what warnings you give them, no matter what you reveal, they have no intent of altering their life based on the 
spiritual information and intelligence that's being revealed to them. No intent. None. Zero. And that's why I'm not anxious to talk to them because, <laughs> but that's a different story. Anyway, so as you can see here, he's saying, likewise, also these filthy dreamers, what are they going to do? They're going to also defile the flesh. They're going to get you to do things that you should not be doing, child of God, woman of God, man of God. I was watching this uh, this particular demonic ministry on uh, YouTube. And one of the things that they practice at this particular ministry is that in order for you to be washed away from your sins, there was a lady who was the head, you would have to sleep with her, have sex with her. And once this man would have released himself sexually, she would take on the burden of his sin. What? Let's go back to verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares, okay, who were before of all ordained to do this. <laughs> Boy, I hope you are listening to me, yeah? I hope you are listening to me. I hope you are listening because, see, people want to get offended. Oh, don't talk about the man of God like that. Not all that garbage because they don't read. They're not interested in the word of God, you know. What I keep telling you, they're interested in protecting their idols. They're interested in that you don't say, you could curse God all you want. You could curse that Jesus fell and the Holy Spirit. You say whatever you want to say with him, but don't talk about my pastor because I will let you have it. Mm, okay. So these are ideal people who could come in there. Okay, and they could say any nonsense because they like theatrics. They like performances. And that's what those type churches are. They are uh, they are theaters where you go to perform. I feel God in this place. God is telling me to, to, to turn at your neighbor. And, and he's telling me to tell you sow a seed of a thousand. If you don't have it, then turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor to borrow. What scripture can I find this? What I'm saying to you is they are adding to, taking away from. But to ultimately do what though? Well, according to verse 8, to, to defile the flesh. They despise dominion and speak evil of dignitaries. Now, this scripture is very interesting, this particular verse, because what he's saying here is that another piece of empirical evidence and how you're going to know who they are, they begin to downplay Jesus. They do it subtly first, and you see it now in a lot of these demonic deliverance ministries. I, I make fun of it all the time. And this is how it's subtly creeping in. You will never, a lot of those videos that I posted, not other people post in my words of wisdom group, exposing these false prophets. And I always say, watch their behavior. Out, out, get out. And they start doing this. And as they to their finger, then the person move like this in whichever direction. You will never hear by the blood of Jesus Christ. You will never hear in the name of Jesus. You will never hear scriptures. You will, none of that. So what are they doing though? The, the only name that can de truly deliver will be the name of Jesus. So where, who is sponsoring your power? See, the problem, and that's why a lot of people are going to be deceived, when you don't get this type of understanding, it's difficult because you are trained that as long as she's a man or woman of God, and if pastor brought him or her here, then pastor ain't going to make no mistake to bring no fake prophet up in here or no fake dreamer. So this got to be of God. Well, really? So why weren't you using the benchmark? Because they're saying stuff now that does not line up with the word of God. For example, uh, I know my, uh, I think I told the story before, my wife was invited to a particular church. And as usual, uh, before she go, I pray for her. I cover her, I pray. I am her covering according to scripture. That if this place is not of God, now mind you, I know nothing about the place, but I know how to be proactive spiritually because you don't know what you're dealing with out there. So she told me when she got there, the first thing they advised her to do is take off her shoe, have a seat because they have like a basin of water where they would wash your feet. And everybody is wearing a, an article of red. She wasn't because she didn't know she was supposed to bring this. This is a witchcraft place. This is an initiation. Thank God I prayed for before she left. Thank God I covered her by the authority given to me as her husband before she left. And when she came and told me that, I did another round of prayer on her. 
But how would you know this? You got to know. You got to know the. You got to know the rules. If you don't know, you think, well, you know, they what Jesus washed so and so feet. There you go. So here it is. You initiated into something, and don't even realize it. But Magda did it happen, and watch all hell break loose in your life. So watch this now. Watch this now. Watch this. Scripture goes on to say, likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despising dominion, and speaking evil of dignity. Dignity is right. Drop to verse 10 of Jude 1. But these, who's these? These filthy dreamers, these men that crept in unawares, who the filthy dreamers are empowered. That's why the word likewise was used. They are the same. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally. So when you're talking about spiritual things, they have no respect for it because everything in their lives is based on what is natural. Oh, come on, man. You don't got to go through all these rules, man, rules. I've been listening to this guy, Kevin, man. I'm just sick of him, man. Every minute he talking nonsense, but rules and principles and ordinance. Man, come on, man. Come on, man. You just No. No. No, man. Listen, all you need is this amulet. You put this amulet on and no spirit could touch you. You want to focus better? You need a spirit guide. Mm -hmm. Okay? And the spirit guide, in order for him to, to know as you, then you have to, to put on this particular fragrance or burn this particular uh, essence oil, specific ones, or burn a particular candle or, or get some sage and do it around your house. Yeah, really? Where can you find that in the scriptures? I know you're a man of God and all that, but I mean, uh, you think you give me some scriptures on that? I just want, you know, be a little safe here. No biggie. I'm not trying to say what you say. It ain't true. But show me it in the scriptures. And you got my full attention. He said, verse 10, for, but these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as what? Brute beasts. And those things they corrupt themselves. He used the term brute beast because they are defiant. They are on a mission that we are here to corrupt the word of God and pull with us as much people as possible. We have no heart that have compassion or nothing for nobody. We are on, an, on a mission from the kingdom of darkness and, and we come to turn this place upside down. But you'll never know that. But the scripture is warning you of it. The scripture goes on to verse 11. Woe unto them. Sorrow is going to be to these people. For they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward. So look what he's saying now. Because he's giving us another example of how to identify these people. He says, woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. Cain killed his brother because of jealousy, right? They go that way. They, they, they will destroy people. He's showing you who, how to pick these people out. They're riddled with jealousy. Watch this now. Then he says, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward. But who was Balaam? Balaam used to be a prophet of God. Balaam left that to go practice witchcraft, mixing up with the things of God. So remember when Balak called him, he says, now come, I hear you are good with your curses and your spell. And whoever you curse is curse, and whoever is blessed is blessed. And Numbers 23, Numbers 24. He said, now come. And he says, watch it. Don't be like Balaam, because Balaam, he's saying, He's using Balaam as a likewise of whom he's talking about. Balaam was one of them. Everything, the incentive for him was money. The incentive to him, what, what, what financial reward will I get by leaving the things of God and going to practice this sorcery? Let's bring it back to the church today. Let's bring it back to the church. And when I say to the church, those who are deep into the seed, so in nonsense, and everything they discuss is money, 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 seed, 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 give, 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 first fruit, last fruit, third fruit, hopscotch fruit, all this. These are the people he's talking about. They will sell their souls for money. They don't care how broke you are. It doesn't matter. But what he's also saying is these are the ones that I'm telling you have crept in unawares. crept woe unto them verse 11 for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perish in their gain saying of course these are spots in your feast in your feast of charity uh, but you don't have to read the rest of them let's stop that verse 11 so so far even though my focus was verse 11 as it relates to the filthy dreamers and those who will come saying the Lord spoke to them in a dream and he showed me your church. 
And he's going to say what people are used to hearing and what they expect. People are jealous of what you're doing here, man of God. I want to be clear with you. He's talking to the pastor now. First lady, there are many people, glory to God, that's jealous of you and want to be first lady too. Have we met before? Man of God, I see where you're struggling trying to build the house of God. So he's doing everything for everybody to agree. That's true. They were spreading in the crowd. That's true. You know how long they was fighting pastor? My God, man. I mean, every time pastor try, get something done, they're doing all kind of wickedness around this place. This guy have yet to quote one scripture. This guy have yet to tell you anything about Christ and him crucified and deliverance and getting your soul right. This guy, will you will never hear from him. Learn to forgive people. Learn to help the poor. You will never in this life hear that. No, because he came there with a strategy. And he's coming there to ride on what they was already into. Material things, money, filthy lucre. But I hear, listen to me carefully, Bishop. Listen to me. Listen to me carefully. God is getting ready to rise you out of the ashes. I hear God say he's going to turn this thing around again. And I don't know. But God says he's going to put a spirit to work in the people. Come on now, work with me, where the people are going to freely give. So this is his sales pitch in getting you to give indirectly. The pastor is going to love this because, boy, this guy taking a load off of us. I mean, he's asking me, like, we sent him there. So this is how this guy is going to mose his way in. It ain't going to be long before he want to now go to this church and the pastor is going to favor him because he knows how to raise funds now and make him second in charge. And that's all this guy wanted. And this is where he began to do his bewitching. This is where he began to turn the members against the pastor, all in an effort to not only become the pastor, but to introduce his doctrine. Boy, talking to someone. Somebody got this happening right now. But they can't see it. They can't. You know why they can't see it? Because they're so caught up. They're so caught up on what they do see and not what they cannot see, which is the things that are spiritual. All right, now watch this. Let's go now to uh, Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5, and we're going to read from verse 26 to 29. Jeremiah chapter 5. We can camp out a lot in Jeremiah tonight. And we're going to read Jeremiah 5, verse 26 to 29. All right? I'm telling you, these people who are coming, they are well-versed in the Scriptures. They are well. They are well versed in the things of God. They, when I say in the scriptures, they're not well versed to teach truth. They are well versed in the scripture to knock down your theology. Most of them, how are you going to know them too? They are not spiritual, but highly intellectual. So when they discuss the Bible, they will never discuss it from a spiritual perspective but an intellectual perspective where they bring in Newton's law and Ohm's law and all of this stuff because they're, they're, again, this is them injecting it. So they have you mesmerized. We're going, man, this guy is so brilliant, man. You, you know, he talk about the constellation and the skies and the moon and yeah, but he never talked about the Bible. See, he knows that you are ignorant here. He knows this. So he knows what level to deal with you on. Remember what the true, sorry, remember what the false and filthy dreamers are about. They are ultimately to deceive you and then mislead you, pull you away from what you know to be God. This is what Simon of Samaria did. But anyway, we ain't going to deny. So Jeremiah 5, beginning at verse 26. For among my people are found wicked men. These are these people I'm telling you now. They lay wait as he that set it snares or traps. They set a trap. And they catch men. But what is this trap? Exactly what I just told you. The Bible, Jesus said, listen, now you need to be careful of false prophets. For they come as wolves, but they're dressed in sheep clothing. So what he's saying, internally, they are, they are vultures. They are vicious men with an agenda. But they're going to come humbly, respectfully before you. Because they want to be pulled into the fold only now to begin to plant their seeds there, to corrupt everybody. He says, verse 6, For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait as he that set it snares. They set a trap, they catch men. Okay. 
as a cage is full of birds, so are their houses. Listen to the key word, full of what? Full of who? Deceit. What did I tell you about filthy dreamers and, and false dreamers? Ultimately, to deceive you with the intent of misleading you from the word of God. So he's telling you these are wicked, evil people, but they have already studied the congregation. They have studied that pastor. Trust me, they've been coming to that church for a while as seemingly a visitor, and they sat back there like they were so interested in pastor's sermon, but they're studying him. Not just him, there are other, what I call, cell agents in there. You know, uh, the Taliban and Afghanistan, those fellas who into those extremists. You know, they have what they call cells, different of their kind in different countries, waiting on that call to strap themselves with a bomb because they have no problem committing suicide with the intent of causing thousands of casualties. So they're not afraid of death. That's why the Bible called them brute beasts in Jude. They have the heart of an animal where they don't care. It's their agenda. It's their way. And we don't care. We don't care. We have to die in this. Don't matter. It's the same thing with these false prophets. It's the same thing with these false dreamers. Remember, they were ordained before they actually came there to do specifically that. They're not coming there with a compassionate heart. They're not coming there. None of that. They come in to shut it down by all in any means necessary. So the Bible says, as a cage, as verse 27 of Jeremiah 5, as a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore, they have become great and wax rich. How is this? Well, he did use the word deceit, right? So how are these people becoming rich in the church and they're of the devil? Because they're, they, they're giving you what you like. They're selling, they're selling vials, they're selling pens, they're selling scarves and shofars and uh, uh supernatural glasses they're selling all of that they have our uh, jesus ipads now you don't know that oh yeah they got jesus ipad okay and you could actually connect with jesus with this they're becoming rich and how they're becoming rich by using or implementing or inserting their doctrine and their doctrine is always going to come with a price it is never free you're going to pay for this but slowly dispelling the things of god Remember, and Judy says they have no problem speaking evil of kings, dignitaries, and dominion. He's talking about the kingdom of God. So he started to make his own doctrine now. I heard a particular preacher, one whom I was very disappointed in. And that preacher said that, that the kingdom of God is not about Jesus Christ. Mm. Mm. The kingdom of God is not about Jesus Christ. But the kingdom should be, Jesus is supposed to come to preach the kingdom, not himself. So the kingdom died for us. The kingdom took 40 stripes, save one. The kingdom had a thing around its head. Slowly pushing in their doctrine. But they started from an intellectual level. Where you say, man, that's an intelligent person. That is a great man. This guy is so brilliant with the word of God. He's brilliant. With the deception of the word in terms of introducing intelligence as opposed to the written scriptures. That's what you mean, right? He says, watch out for them. Oh, we're not going to preach Jesus Christ because, you know, blah, blah. No, 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 King. What you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? If, why are you trying? Why are you so adamant about your doctrine over the laws of God that is not saying what you say? But remember, they didn't just throw Jesus under the bus just like that. They built a platform that you enjoyed. They built a platform to win your trust. They built a platform that make you believe that sowing seed is the only way you could get answers, miracles, breakthroughs from the kingdom of God. They made you believe that if you don't sow a seed into their life, you can't hear or receive blessings from God. So they were building their platform all along. Now that they feel confident, they say, okay, now, I'm going to say something that's going to shock you. But the kingdom is not about Jesus. He was a good man. Don't get me wrong. He was a good man. He was a beautiful person and he, he was a regular prophet. I mean, let's be real. He's a regular prophet, but it was not about him. Remember now, the scripture says we are all like gods. So now you see, now at first you can be shocked, but then you're going to reminisce of how he did so much for the church, this, this preacher now, and how... 
he was building his platform and, and you don't want to offend him and, and whatever. So all along, he was getting you, he was pulling you, give me a hand, come up here, come up here with me. Uh, there you go, come give me a hand too. You come on here too. You be committed to me now. Come, uh, You come there too. Now you have a seat right there because clearly you're convinced of my false doctrine and now I have you under my spell. So I'm now going to introduce more nonsense to you. So he would, I wouldn't be surprised when he tell you stuff like, your wife have a spirit. God showed that to me in a dream. Because he's convinced he's, he's bold now. What do they call him? The Bible's call him brute beasts. Because he know he got you under a spell. He said, now listen here. I'm going to sacrifice my life to get the spirit out of your wife. Yes, pastor, how are you going to do that? Now, this is going to sound strange, but I'm only telling you what the Lord showed me in a dream. Of course, he's dealing with familiar spirits. And he's going to tell the guy some stuff that is true. He said, yeah, my Lord is saying to me, I have to sleep with your wife to grab hold of that spirit out of her. Now, at first, he can be a little shocked, but remember who says God, this, this preacher. Okay, pastor. Now, I told him I'm going to agree to it because, again, Kevin, you're making this stuff up. No, let's go back to Jude. Let's go back to Jude. Let's go back to Jude. We can keep our finger here because you may think I'm making this up. Let's go back to Jude, okay? Because I want to show you a word which speaks of what I'm talking about. Let's go back to Jude. Now let's go back here to verse 4. Jude 1 verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. They are ungodly men turning the grace of our Lord into who again? Lasciviousness. Could you please look up that word? Could you could you please look up that word? That's your homework. I'm not even gonna tell you what it means. Go look it up. I tell you, you gotta do it lust, you gotta do it uh shameful acts, you gotta do it filthiness. But you go look it up. So I'm telling you, once they feel confident on the on your platform or their platform, and they've convinced you now, this is where they sexual acts. This is why. When Jude wrote this, he said, I felt compelled to write this unto you, fellow saints. He used Sodom and Gomorrah. He used the angels who were, who were, who were bound to everlasting darkness until the day of judgment. But who were these angels? These were the same angels he spoke about, God spoke about in Genesis 6. The, 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 the sons of God that slept with the daughters of men. So in each one of these examples, look at verse 7, he talked about Sodom and Gomorrah. Each one of them are showing sexual connotation where the convincing of these people to come on board and to leave God, let's have some sex, let's have some fun. This is no different. Let's go back to Numbers 25. When Balak and Balaam realized that they could not curse the children of Israel, he says, listen, Balak, I cannot curse him. This is Balaam speaking. I can't curse him because God has found no iniquity in him. But let me advise you. Let me tell you. See that I can't do this. Let me tell you to do. Get your Moabite women. Watch, watch it. To seduce the men of Israel. To make them leave their wives and engage in adultery and fornication with them. Read the story. And as a result of that, over 25,000 of them died. A plague broke out. But the plague really was from the seven altars that they had put up, a total of 21 altars, that the spirits couldn't come from before, but after there was now found sin in the camp, or all hell breaking loose now. But the premises and when all of this happened was from a sexual perspective. That is what we've seen in Jude 1, chapter 5, 6, and 7. The first one, he says, in verse 5, he talked about how, uh, how he destroyed... Verse 5, I will therefore put you in remembrance. I'm going to remind you, though you were once this, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord having saved the people of the land of Egypt after destroying them that believed not. Then he goes into the sexual stuff that, that, they, that was used to lure them in. Get familiar with scripture. That's what I can tell you. Get familiar with scriptures and you will be able to see through these people wickedness. They're going to bring you on their level and beat you with experience. All right? So let's go back here now to Jeremiah. Let's go back here to Jeremiah 5. Okay? I'm going to look out here in verse uh, 26. Okay? For among my people are found wicked men, fake pastors, dreamers, all these other people. They lay wait as he that set it snares. They set a trap. They catch men. Verse 27 of Jeremiah 5. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit 
Therefore, they are become great wax. They become rich because of the deceitful things that Ted Ted telling you. God says, whoever buy this handkerchief from me, whoever buy this handkerchief, and then you rub it on the face of your husband who's dying from corona, who's dying from corona, he's not going to die from corona. Where are these people now? That's another thing. Where, where These people, the miracle cloths and the miracle juice and Kool-Aid and stuff, we have a pandemic, but this is the best time to prove your spiritual powers in these things. Where, where are they? I don't want to hear one person after Corona trying to sell miracle stuff when you did nothing when Corona and the pandemic was here. You are a false prophet. Because if it's any time for you to make your debut, is now. If those cloths and coins and all of these other nonsense was as real as you say they were, why aren't you on every corner giving people you tell them you don't have to take the shot. Don't take it. Here, take this, this, this shoal, take this cloth, take this whatever. Where are they now? Why can't we? Right now, the, the churches who subscribe to these people should be sounding the alarm. Hey, 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 you do not have to die from corona. But how much millions of people have died worldwide? What over 100 million now? Where are the miracle cloths? Where is the Jesus juice? Where are the miracle? But did, did they have short? I mean, they slowed down in production. I don't want to hear another preacher. I will turn my TV off. If after all of this, he now comes to the scene and saying that if you purchase this vial of oil, this cloth, it can heal you of diseases. Where are you now? Where is your cloth now? Where is your Jesus juice? Where is your Jesus rum punch? Where is your Jesus daiquiri? Where is it? Verse 27, I say cages full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore, they are become great. They become rich off of you. Listen to verse 28. They are wax fat. They become wealthy. They shine in the there's expensive suits. Yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. Meaning that those who are doing evil, they don't pay no attention to them. Listen, they judge not the cause. They, sorry, they judge not the cause or the cause of the fatherless. Yet they prosper. And the right of the needy, they do not judge. They ain't chatting for no poor people. So he's giving you the identifiers of who these people will be. Look at these identifiers and th that's who Jesus and God is talking about right there. Listen to verse 29. Shall I not visit these things, said the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? So what is he saying? He says, now these people are standing in your pulpits who are claiming to, to hear from God through dreams and through visions and prophecies. He says, remember what I tell you, use the Bible as a qualifier. Are they judging and, and bringing forth justice? And Are they promoting that? Or are they just in nice suits and like to be called these grand names? Are they helping the poor? Are they assisting the needy? Are they defending the right of those who are less fortunate? Because if they're not, he says, well, these are the people I'm talking about. These are the people, if you go back to verse 26, for among my people are found the wicked men, but they are pastors, they are bishops, they are doctors, I mean, sorry, doctors of divinity. Yeah, but Kevin, you can't call them wicked. What do you mean? Because when he showed me the qualifiers, they've qualified for it. Oh, I don't want to bring your tithe and offering here. But aren't we supposed to give it to the poor first? <laughs> no, 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 not in this church. No, it's not. Now, if you want to go to heaven, I just watched a video yesterday. The pastor said you will not go to heaven if you do not pay tithe. But I don't blame him. He has conditioned them to believe that. And they're not interested in asking him for a scripture because they're afraid of him. Because even still, that bullying fear in them. Don't ever ask your pastor anything. We will put you in this church and you'll be cursed with a curse. You'll never prosper in this life because you question your pastor. And on top of that, you ain't paying title. You're going straight to hellfire. What scripture, sir? Show me the scripture. Now watch this now. Watch this, eh? Watch this because we can get deep right now. We're about to get rid. Jeremiah 23. Tell you, we can camp out here for a while. Jeremiah 23. I love in this already. I'm going to go from verse 25 to verse 32. Verse 25. Jeremiah 23. Hold on. Jeremiah 23. Good. Verse 25 to verse 32. Listen to this. I have heard that the prophets, I have heard what the prophets said. 
that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. So this is God again. This is God speaking through his prophet Jeremiah. He says they are prophets or they are lying, claiming that they would have had dreams from me, which was odd. But who did God address them as? Well, in Jeremiah 5 and 26, he addressed them as wicked men. In the book of Jude, beginning at verse 8, he says they are filthy dreamers. Let, 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 let's, let's stay with Scripture. Let's stay with Scripture now. But they're not, this, this, this is the part you're not going to see. They're not wearing a shirt that says, I'm the fakest prophet you will ever find. They don't have at the back of them, I'm the filthiest dreamer you will ever come across. They don't have on their foreheads, there is nothing of truth in me. Instead, they are dressed just like distinguished, dignified men of God. Very polite, well-spoken, very articulate. They nod across their T's and dot their I's. Oh yeah, and they know what buttons to push to get the people going because they have trained them to reverence them and not God. The next, after this rendition, the next voice you will hear will be that of our pastor. Then he comes up there. And everybody have to stand up. This pastor is like you in court now. You better stand up. You think this is. Don't stand up for God, but you stand up for him. So you stand up, he stand up, then he's, <laughs> you, you, you can be seated. <laughs> Glory be to God. I hear God say, oh, here we go again. No scripture, no teaching me nothing about the Bible. Don't tell me nothing about the rules. Don't tell me nothing about this sorcery going on in my life. Nothing about generational curses. Nothing about getting a deeper understanding of the things of God and understanding the things of the spiritual world, what I should be focused on. Because this is where Paul said in 2 Corinthians 1, 18, that my focus shall not be on the things that are seen, but my focus should be on the things that are unseen. I'm not going to hear any of that. What I'm going to hear now is a cadre. God, I, I hear God says, he's going to bless you. God is going to turn that thing around for you. There are people out here crying and saying, when is God going to visit me? I stopped by to tell you today, God has heard your cry. Yeah, but I still found a game though. I got a full-fledged relationship with another man's wife. I stole some money on the job, and I'm still embezzling money, and people have been fired because of me. They haven't figured who I am as yet. And you're saying, God is going to bless me. God is going to turn that thing around for me. But there's no punishment for me. No. God says there's some of you in here who have $1,000, $100. And the enemy you see today, you will see no more. They're jealous of you. These are all of the buttons that you punch to get them jumping. They're jealous of you. Okay. God said, they, 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 they don't hate you. Come on now. They hate what you will become. Come on. P play that music for me. They don't hate me, but they hate what I've become. What, and what am I going to become? I see God making you the CEO. I, don't, I, don't, I see where you are going to be promoted above someone who think they're going to be promoted. God is going to give you favor. So after he'd have adorned you with all of this, God is going to bless you. God is going to give you. He's never telling you about getting your heart right, putting your house in order, live a clean life, forgive others, practice apologizing. None of this. So after you've already pumped you up, then the next move is sacrifice. It comes, this is the time in the service where we uh, have to worship God in our giving. Glory be to Jesus. And, 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 and he, he can give you all the scriptures now, all the scriptures. He that soweth sparingly, but I know there are no sparingly sowers in this house, maybe up the road, but not here. Glory be to God. And, and I hear God say that he got a special blessing for those with a special seed offering. Your life taken away. Next week, Tuesday, you're going to be a dead man, a dead woman. You don't notice, though. Your life is winding down, but you don't notice. You don't know you're going to be in a horrific car accident. 
You don't know this. And this joker up here is telling you nonsense. And your heart is literally drenched in hate, drenched in bitterness, drenched in anger. But his message is very comforting. God is going to bless me. And those enemies on my job, mm -hmm, God is going to put them in their place. Just for me, the sinner who's having sex with the boss wife, just for me, who's stealing the money out of the, the, the petty cash, just for me, who's taking the stationery off the job and using it in my poison. But God is going to bless me and God is going to promote me and God is going to advance me. And nothing I got to do. The only thing that I don't have to read my Bible. I don't have to do. All I have to do is continue fornicating, continue sleeping with this man wife, continue stealing. The only thing that I need to do. So this awesome God who is good all the time and all the time he's good. The only thing I got to do is give him a seed. That's it. That's it. Thank you, Rev. You're the best Rev since sliced bread. He's the best thing. That's all I got to do. But time next week, you're going to be a deceased person. What you can do then? But it's time to stand before your Savior. Let me see what you, well, let me see the advice he gave you. Let me see how it's going to pan out now. Let's see how this can work out. <sighs> Talking nonsense. So the scriptures are very clear here. Listen to this. I so love this. He says here in Jeremiah 23, beginning at uh, verse 25, I have heard that the prophets, I have heard what the prophets said, that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed. I have dreamed, meaning I had a dream. Verse 26, how long shall this be in the heart of the prophet that prophesy lies? Why are you lying? Why, why are you telling people stuff that is not true? He's telling it because he understands that they're conditioned for it. He knows this church is lukewarm. He knows the people in here, all they want is a breakthrough. All they want is a, they don't want to clean up their lives. They don't want to do nothing to invite the true presence of God. They, they want someone to come there to tell them something they want to hear. I don't want to hear Kevin. Every time I hear about Kevin, Kevin talking about some curse would got us tied down. Kevin talking about how the ancestors did. We don't want to hear that. What we want to hear is how could we be blessed, but at the same time living in our evil. Come on, man. No. We want our cake and eat it too. We want to find a cake steal. We want to cover our neighbors. We want to live like a dog from Monday to Saturday. And when we roll up in this place on Sunday or the Sabbath day, whichever day you choose, whatever day you pick, when we roll up in here, we ready to sow our seed because that is the new doctrine now. Sow a seed and God is going to turn that thing around for us. Glory be to Jesus. That's what we want. Yeah. Forget time ticking away. Forget our house is not in order. But every day we're skating on thin ice, not knowing that one day this ice is going to crack and we are going to be pulled into outer darkness and have to face an angry God because we, we made the decision. We knew better. We've read it. We've listened, but we don't want to hear Kevin. We don't want to hear no true preachers. What we want is what will satisfy our appetites now. Because we're ready for Sunday to come again or Saturday to come again because we got our seed ready. God is a God of seed, according to the preachers. So we're going to give him a seed and we can, and we got to walk up there and showing the seven, eight hundred dollars in our hand, waving it, and we're going to rest it to the altar. And that is the new order of repentance, sowing seed. Hypocrite. <laughs> so listen to this, right? Verse 26, how long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets. Listen, they are prophets of the deceit of their own hearts. You all hearing this? What did I tell you? A false and filthy dreamer are people who come to deceive. They are agents of the devil coming under the guise of God to deceive you and ultimately pull you from the things of God. But, excuse me, but this don't happen overnight. They, they are patient. 
they 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 will take their time they will be be a part of the the, the children's ministry part of the babysitting ministry they will take their time and work their way up they're going to be humble they're going to be yes some men to pass up because they want the favor of but they have an agenda they can take over this place one day but while they're climbing up there, they're telling the advising pastor to do certain things that they know will turn the crowd off from him eventually. But this is where they come in to be the one who's going to save the day. And all of a sudden, the affections that they once had on the pastor is going to go to this hypocrite over here. But this hypocrite got an agenda because what, what is their first strategy of operation? We got to deceive them. We're, we're already deceiving them because we don't believe in the God that they believe in. We're not interested in that. But we're going to come to those prayer meetings. We're going to come to those Bible studies. We're going to sow into whomever uh, asks for seed. We want pastor to see us because this is all in an effort of gaining his confidence to bring us closer into the fold. There's only a matter of time before he elevates us over those who've been there for years. Watch what the scripture says. Verse 27 says, well, let's go back to verse 26. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophet? How long will they tell these lying dreams? that prophesy lies. Yea, they are prophets of deceit of their own heart. You all, you all, you all hear this, right? They are prophets of, they, they are the prophecies that's coming from them is coming from their own hearts, meaning that they're making this up. This have nothing to do with who? This have nothing to do with God. So if it's coming from their own deceitful heart, they're not Christians, they're not believers, but they're pretending to be that. But if it's coming from their own heart, well, let's look at what's in their heart. So let's quickly go. We're going to come right back here. Let's go to Jeremiah 17. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 17. I'm going to look at verse 9 because we want to see uh, how their hearts are operating. Okay, Jeremiah 17 verse 9 says, The heart is deceitful, watch this now, above some things. No, that's not what I'm reading. The heart is deceitful above what? All things. Whoa, 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 whoa. The scripture is telling us, the scripture is giving us this empirical evidence that there is nothing, there is nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing that is more deceitful than a man's heart. Whoa. Let me read that again. Jeremiah 17 verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all. Listen, not some things. There is nothing, there is nothing in existence. Listen what the scripture is saying. All things, meaning that everything in creation, there is nothing more deceitful than a person's heart. Why am I bringing this up? Because we just read that the things that they're saying God said from their dreams is coming from their own heart that the scripture is telling us it is the most deceitful thing in existence. The heart is deceitful above things. And listen, I'm desperately wicked. It, cannot, it is anxious. It cannot wait to do evil. Desperately wicked. He says, who can know it? Only God. This is why, oh God, I love you so much. This is why I keep telling you, if you are not using the scriptures as the benchmark for any religious leader, then you are rolling on the red carpet to be deceived. I don't care who the religious leaders, and I, there's a lot of pastors that I like to listen to. I love teaching, so I listen to more teachers than preachers. But if the preacher preaching says, I listen to him too, right? But I don't ever put them above the word of God, because if I hear error, mm, now I'm excellent at chewing up the meat and spitting out the bones, meaning that I'm not judging on, because there's some doctrines that they are totally you know, off the wall with. But I'm not holding that against them per se because a lot of what they say makes sense. So that's why I tell you, I chew the meat and I spit out the bones. I don't condemn them. I condemn a preacher when that preacher is vehemently going against the laws of God. When he is taking a stand, there's nothing wrong with homosexuality. There's nothing wrong with fornication. There's nothing wrong with having multiple wives. And when he or she is going against the word of God like that, then I have no respect for them. Fuck, I don't want to hear them. So the Bible says the heart is desperately wicked, right? So let's go back here to Jeremiah 23 again. Let's go back to Jeremiah 23, beginning at verse 26, right? Good. And we can drop our way here to verse 20. Yeah, verse 27 of Jeremiah 23. Which thing which thing to cause my people to forget my name? No, 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 no. No, I'm not there. Jeremiah 25. 
Okay, I have heard that the prophet said that prophesy lies in my name, saying I have dreamed a dream. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets? How long shall what be in the heart of the prophets? These lies that they prophesy. They are prophets of they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. Okay? Listen to verse 27. Which think to cause my people to forget my name. So he's telling you again, like we would have read in the book of Jude. Their purpose is to deceive and to make you to dismiss God altogether. Now, you may be saying to me, but Kevin, how is this happening? Because I don't, I've never seen a pastor come on the pulpit and dismiss God. No, they're never going to come on the pulpit and say, God is a liar and God ain't real. What do you see it in the small things that you're seeing now that will lead to greater things? See it sowing. See it sowing. And again, I got to be clear, seed sowing is not wrong. There's nothing wrong with seed sowing. What is wrong with the seed sowing I'm speaking about is when you said, hey, you don't need the Bible. All you need to sow a seed to be healed. Sow a seed to release the blessing. Sow a seed so that the prophet could bless you. Sow a seed so that God can release a blessing to you. That is not scripture. That is a false prophet. That is a fake pastor. That is a liar who is deceiving you gradually in increments. Because the more you buy into that, they're now going to raise the bar. And it ain't going to be long before they tell you, you don't really need salvation. Let's be real now. You don't need salvation. All you need is a good bank account. Because God is looking at your bank account. Okay? And God loved a cheerful giver. Come on, come on, saints. Let's be real. How could you be a cheerful giver? Glory be to Jesus. If you don't have a healthy bank account. I hear God says for those who have a, a low bank account, and God says, if you want to raise that, you got to sow into this ministry so that the anointing that's upon this ministry can fall upon your bank account and you'll have more money to give us, you fools. I may sound comical, but this is where we've been heading. It can come a day, you don't even have to bring your Bible to these places no more. Because they will call, they'll have a, 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 a Bible there will be a money Bible. And every scripture is about money. Nothing to do with salvation. Nothing to do with deliverance. None of it. You can laugh all you want. You could get mad all you want. It's happening today. They have already crept in on the best. They are here already. Right, they're already here. So watch this now. Verse 26, how long shall this be in the heart of the prophet that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own hearts, their hearts which are desperately wicked and, 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 and deceitful above everything. Verse 27, which thing to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams. I had a dream about you, Mary. And the spirit of the Lord rest upon me in the dream. And he, he rolled out the scroll and he said, It's okay for you to cheat on your husband if he's not a man of God. Remember, Mary, now he's going to manipulate scripture. You know, Mary, we have to be equally yoked. So if you choose to date any man in here that knows God while you're married, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Because at that stage, you'll be equally yoked. Glory. While this may sound comical, we're already heading in this direction. The infrastructure has already been laid out and many people are subscribing to it. Every time I preach on it, they get mad. When I tell them, they, I say it all the time, covering, demonic. See, it's going for miracles, demonic. Uh, altering the structure of God hierarchy in his church and his kingdom is demonic. What do you mean by that, Kevin? I say it to you all the time, a woman cannot be a bishop. Any woman that is a bishop or was ordained a bishop, it is not the order of God according to the scriptures. Not my opinion, not your opinion. We read it in Timothy. We read it in Titus. And it gives the qualifier for each title. It makes it clear. This is no attack against, no, you're going to change this. this. This is no sex, it's nothing. But what am I telling you? Bit by bit, they're never going to come on the pulpit and says, and curse God. They're never going to come up there and say, don't serve Jesus. Well, well, Kevin, how are they going to do their deceit? Piece by piece, they're going to alter and delete and amend the scriptures. Piece by piece, and, and, and it's all going to, to be on your, your lust. They, 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 you watch and see, watch and see, watch and see the things that's going to come from this. And they're going to appeal you through sexuality. They're going to appeal you through lust and, and stuff like that. But Kevin, how? 
How, Kevin? How? You don't want no other spirits that are releasing them. But you see, you're so busy defending everything except scripture, you will also be on board with it. Because you're now, it's already, like I said, they're already here. And the evidence of that, you're, you're justifying them. You're protecting them. You're defending them. They're defending you, but you're defending them. Come on, man, Kevin, man. You, you keep running over this bishop foolishness, man. Come on, the woman is a preacher, a preacher. Listen, if a woman want to preach, share the word of God, I'm not disputing that, you know. Do what you want to do. All I'm saying is, how did whoever ordain you? Where did you get the authority to do it? If you say to me, if you say to me, Kevin, listen, there's nothing wrong with ordaining women. Okay, show me where it's right then. Because I could say to you also, there's nothing wrong with having multiple wives. Well, you can tell me now. You can tell me I'm a sinner, right? You can tell me I'm a fornicator, right? An adulterer, that's what you can tell me, right? And I'm wrong. So wouldn't you be a hypocrite if you're also showing me laws in the Bible that's going against what you're doing? This is not to debate. What I'm saying to you, listen Listen to what I'm saying. This is this have nothing to do with who ordains or who don't ordains. I'm showing you, Jude said, these wicked men has crept in. I know they're already here. And the initiation of what they're doing, they come in as men and women of God, doing all the things that we like, but ultimately they're tweaking the scriptures. They're redefining it. Look at the word. I told you look at the word lascivious, right? Look at it. Look at it. The order of God is going to be removed. The order. God, God put a man in charge. He put him, and this has nothing to do with being sexist. This is his order. This is his order. Who, who did he make Adam or Eve first? This is his order. This has nothing to do with, I won't be in charge and women should submit to us. No, I don't believe in that crazy bullying stuff. What I'm saying to you, I won't do it God way. That's all I'm saying to you. No, you could do it your way. I just want to do what, what the Bible says is what I want to do. Okay. So all of this, a woman shouldn't usurp the authority of a man and all this other stuff. If you, you don't have to believe in that, but that's what the scripture says. But the people who go against that are, are the people I'm talking about. These are the ones who are going to tell you. These are the, the, the intellectual. No, don't listen to Kevin. Remember, I'm doctor. I'm Dr. Timbuktu, all right, from the Toyot region and the Federation of Christian Apostolic uh, whatever. So all that means is that I'm smarter than Mr. Kai over here. But I'm not trying to be smarter than you. All I'm saying to you, if the Bible say we should not fornicate, but you're saying that we can fornicate, how, who gave you the authority? What body of power gave you the authority to amend the word of God? Just all I'm saying to you, tell me how. When you stand before God and you say, okay, a woman could be a bishop. Okay, fine. You might have some spiritual background. Now show it to me. Now don't show me no vague scriptures. Don't show me we're all one in Christ. Don't show me that. Because the whole scripture is talking about salvation. Don't show me that. I, I still want to keep telling you that. I know the scriptures. Show me. Because if if this isn't what Christ want, why did he inspire men to put it in the scriptures? Why? And if it was okay for us to have multiple wives, then why didn't he put Adam and Eve, Adam, Adam in the garden with Eve and Mary and all these other people so we, so we could see the example? Why, why can't I see this? Simultaneously, that is. Make me understand, because again, I, you may be right. You may have the scriptures to support what you're saying. I just want to be clear. And I'm not going to allow you to insert being chauvinistic or sexist, because that is not the case here. You cannot come on my job. This is my company. And I have rules on here that you have to wear a uniform, a pink, sorry, a white shirt and a blue pants or a skirt. You cannot come and say, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to follow your rule. Well, you don't want to be here no more then. So don't, don't, don't switch it. Those, how could you change God law, sir? When you got an stop, you have a home. Nobody could come in your house and change the rules. You will take them to the cleaners. But you're telling me the infallible word of God, the unadulterated word of God, the word that has been that has been 
uh, heaven and earth, the Bible says, will pass away, but not one tittle of this shall pass. And you are telling me that God told you, because this is what a preacher said, a bishop, God told you that because there were a shortage of men stepping up to the plate to become bishops, he said that you could now make a woman a bishop. These are the filthy dreamers. These are the false prophets. He said they will creep in unawares. They can make that statement because they know the people worship them. These people worship me. And be, guess what? They will believe me any day. Then, then if a Kevin come here and talk nonsense, but this cannot be. All I say is show me the scripture. I ain't looking for no debate. I ain't looking to be right. The only thing I want to be right about, because I'm going to be judged according to this book, I want to make sure I'm in right alignment with this. When I worked at my former job and we had projects and so on, I wanted, and they will always tell us this. This was the, 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 the keynote that we were, all of the account executives were told. Do it right the first time according to policy. You will never have a problem if you're following policy because the policy will defend you. But you cannot stand before God and say, hey, God, now you know. You know I was bishop to the 10th power. You know that. Now you know, God. When I ordained them, I was doing that because they, they were more good at bringing souls to the kingdom. No, 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 bro. No, 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 no. You can't do that. Mm -mm. So you're God. So you're, this is now blasphemy. Remember who wrote the Constitution? Who? the government of heaven. Are you insinuating that you're equal to the government of heaven to now make amendments to the constitution, which is the Holy Scriptures? No pastor could ever get me to follow him that directly go against the word. of. That's what I'm telling you, you know. Now, he might have write some books and some real biblical stuff may be in there, and I will read it even though he's going against the word of God, because I know how to chew up the meat and spit of the bones. But what I'm saying to you, you will never bring me on board though, that you telling me that you, because some body of people have ordained you to be a bishop, sir, that you now have the right to say, okay, under my tenure, I'm going to make this woman a bishop. Okay, I can say, I don't. if that's what you want to do, fine. All I'm saying to you, so that we'll all be on one page, show me the scripture, show it to me. Don't tell me about your bylaws and policies. Don't tell me that. And again, let me be clear. I will be clear. This is nothing to do with, with feminineness. This has nothing to do with being sexist. This has nothing to do with men bullying over women. None of that. I am talking about the word of God in Timothy, where God, just like he said to Adam and Eve, do not touch that fruit right there. There's no excuse you could come with to say why you touched it or why you ate it. No excuse. So you, if God says, this is the structure, this is what I want in my church here on the earth, the body of Christ. I want bishops. I want apostles. I want teachers and so on. Now he goes into the qualifiers of it. He say, okay, you, you bishop over here. So you want to vie for bishop? You must be hospitable. You must be the husband of one wife. You must not control your house. Uh, all of this he's speaking from a male perspective. So now the, the apologists or whatever come on board. Well, you know, Kevin, you know, when he said male, he really, it was just a generic term. No, 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 no. There you go again. There you go again. There you go again. I don't know who you think you're talking to. I don't know. You, you ain't talking to me. <laughs> okay. I can read. I, I keep telling you, it was one thing I know I got down back. I can read and I'm very good at comprehending. I'm very good at comprehending. You cannot pull it on me. So go and come again because I'm not going to buy into it. What is your obsession? What is, you know why you're doing it? Because you want to have this so-called liberal thing going on where everybody will love you. Yeah. You know, I did that. You know, you know, we all won. So I'm going to make them ambassadors and give them all kind of stupid names, and I'm going to make you bishop. So, so you, ma'am, you're you you female, ma'am. That's what female is. You're going to be the bishop over these men over here. They're going to submit to you. Forget what the Bible say. Okay, we're not we're not interested in God word, man. Get out of here with that nonsense. We're not into that, man. God don't know what He's doing. God don't know what he's doing. So we, mere mortals, us, we, his creation, is going to teach you, God, how to really write rules. You know what you're doing. Come on, man. Come on, you and Jesus and his Holy Spirit got to get it together. 
Come on, man. There's new times, new era. You see what you're up against? What did I say to you? Jude, chapter 1, verse 4. These wicked people have crept in unawares. They're here already. How you know, Kevin? Because they already started changing the rules a long time ago. And a lot of those rules you've already submitting to, like you're under their covering. Women bishops, sow seed to get miracles, drink certain oils, put on certain cologne, all this garbage. None of what the Bible say. And what did we read? He says, they're pulling you away from your God. But let, 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 listen to what the scripture says. Verse 27 of Jeremiah 23. Which thing to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their father have forgotten my name for Baal. You, hear, you see what he's saying, right? He's not only talking about those who are currently doing it, but he's saying this has happened in the past. And what they have done is they have replaced the name of God or removed the things of God and replaced it with their God, the God of Baal. So what he's saying is that these false dreamers that came in, who are synonymous with false prophets, whatever they were putting on behind, who was sponsoring them, who, was, who commissioned them, the God of, of, of Baal. They was into satanic stuff. They was being supported or they were being sponsored by the kingdom of darkness. But you didn't know that. You didn't know that because you was too busy, so and see it. You didn't know that because you was too busy feeling protected under your pastor covering. When the truth is, he's serving bail. So the truth is, you're under bail's covering. But you didn't know this. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Verse 28. The prophet that had a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that had my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the shaft to the wheat, saith the Lord? We can compare them now. That's what he's saying. Verse 29. Is not my word like a fire, saith the Lord? And like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Therefore, verse 30 of Jeremiah 23. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophet, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. So he's saying how the prophets, the false prophets and dreamers amongst, amongst them, they were discussing with each other. Okay, we, we, we can use Ezekiel's soul, so we just can throw that in there as a part of our deception. We're going to go before them and say, the Lord showed us a dream. And just like how he took uh, Ezekiel into the realm of the spirit, so is he going to do it? And I see God raising you up to a high standard. And, and I don't know, I see like you, you having like different churches and God is showing me like I see. And I see you having ministries all over the world. Oh, glory to God. Oh, you know, God showed me this in the dream too. Yeah, the devil showed you that in the dream. Yeah. So they know how to, I'm telling you, they're here already, you know. And these guys are so great up They because they know what the Christian community like. Those who don't use scripture as their benchmark, that is not everybody. Those who do not use scripture as the benchmark. But you let them tell you something you don't like. You, you watch and see the expression on your face. It'll change completely. Change completely. If he tell you, I see you being a bellman. I see you waiting on tips from the rich people. You can look at this, look at this fake prophet. And that's what you can tell him, look at this old, old liar. <laughs> but why are you saying that? Because the average prophet tells you the blessings. The average prophet never tell you that you need to get your heart right. The average prophet is never tell you repent and, and, and make sure you have unforgiveness. The ain't gonna tell you that because he can't get that $20,000 or he can't get that. He know by telling you that, you definitely ain't sowing no seed now. So he needs to tell you what you need to hear. The Bible says in the book of Jude, they have crept in unawares. Nobody's aware that they're here. Why? Because they sound, look just like you. But Jesus said this. 
Jesus said, he says, beware of false prophet. Why? Why, Jesus? Why are you saying beware? Why are you saying be sober and vigilant about them? He said, because they're coming in as wolves, but they're dressed humbly in sheep clothing. How best to fool the sheep than to look just like the sheep. Scripture. Not my opinion. So watch this. 27. Which thing to cause? Sorry, verse 30. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophet, said the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophet, said the Lord, that use their tongues and say, he said. What is he talking about? Those people every five minutes. The Holy Spirit tell me this. The Holy Spirit just tell me something about you. The Holy Spirit say, what you saying ain't no true. The Holy Spirit always telling you about these people, but the Holy Spirit never tell you to stop telling lies. The Holy Spirit never tell you, go apologize to your sister. The Holy Spirit never tell you you've been rude to your boss. Go there and humble yourself. The Holy Spirit never tell you stay out of the witchcraft force. The Holy Spirit never tell you those things. But he tell you everything that's about other people. I don't want nothing to do with the Holy Spirit you dealing with. Because <laughs> he's something wrong with him. So again, they are already here. And the, the, they're trained to be that way. I remember uh, my the last church that I was to. When I, when I made the decision to leave. But before I left, I had stopped going to church for a while because, again, I was going through all kind of stuff then, and I just couldn't, I wasn't dealing with that then. And I remember I've been at other church for about almost two months. I didn't get a call from anyone, nothing. Remember now, this guy is basically second in charge there, right? He's this great teacher who everybody loves, and, and everybody loves Kevin. But I hear from nobody when I was going through my go-through. So one day, there was a lady from our church who... Uh, saw me on the road. When I pulled into a particular corner trip to a friend of mine, she turned around with her children. And I was already in my friend's yard having a conversation with him. So she said, oh, Minister Kevin, Minister Kevin, oh my God, you were just in my spirit. The Lord was showing telling me. No, she, she didn't say telling me. She said, the Lord was had you in my spirit for the past couple of weeks. And through the form, because they don't know who they're messing with. I said, really? So she was there. My friend was there. And she had her two daughters. They were both uh, in their early 20s. So I said, that's interesting. I said, uh, I haven't been to church for the past two months now. And you're telling me that the Holy Spirit had you so deep into, you were so, the Holy Spirit had you on in me and your spirit. And you never picked up the phone to call me. You never came to my job. You know I live. You've never done anything. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus, Kevin, you're something else. No, 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 I'm not something else because of the Holy Spirit. So, so you were disobedient to the Holy Spirit then. So she see, I wasn't laughing with her anymore. And I got raw when I said, this is, this is why I don't come to church anymore. I said, because I'm tired of the lies. I'm tired of, you're trained to just make up a story and to make it look godly. Stop that. That's, that's hypocrisy. That's deceitfulness. That's lying. She was shocked. She was shocked because she's never seen the side of me. My friend was shocked. But I was at the point where I was just, I've had enough of that nonsense. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of a person standing on the pulpit. I hear God say. And nothing of what he's saying will come to pass. And whatever he says is to benefit him. I was just so tired of it. And I told her, I said, listen, sister so-and-so, with all due respect, okay? I don't believe that the Holy Spirit told you any of what you just said to me. I th and this was my exact words to her. I think you're lying. Cole, just, just exactly what I told her. I said... Why, why have you not made any attempt? You're so called, because she used to be one of them. You're my favorite teacher. Oh, I don't know what I would have done without you. You have made the word so simple for me. All of these accolades while you're there, while you're in the concentration camp, all of that. But when you leave, the deal is, no, 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 no. You're not, a, not a one of us. But when we see you, my God, I can't believe I buck into you. My dear Jesus, you know the Holy Spirit just spoke. God is my witness. Just before you bang that corner. Now, mind you, they don't know you saw them in the other eye a long time trying to duck you. They don't know this. So what I'm saying to you is they practice lies. They practice deceit. And they will tell you, I had a dream about you. The Lord spoke to me. I hear God say he's going to turn that thing. You are repeating what you've heard from your concentration camp. This is what they say to everybody. This is no true word from God, and I refuse to receive this lie. 
Well, you know, they went tell every she went tell everybody because everybody come to me, boy. I hear uh, you say something to so and so. Yeah, yes, I did. And you better not try because I got something to say to you too. <laughs> Tired of it, man. You see, that's why I'm I'm a realist. Okay, I don't believe in that foolishness, man. If God didn't speak to you about me, why are you gonna make up a lie? Why are you trying to make it make yourself look so righteous in front of me? You are a, why are you racking up all these sins? Stop it. <laughs> Stop doing that nonsense, man. I got tired of the lying. I got tired that, that a church person could meet you, never check you. They don't know what you're going through, or they do. They knew what I was going through in my, my marriage. They knew the hell I was good. Nobody checked. But the minute they bucked me somewhere, I could basically read the script. Oh, my God, Brother Kevin. Oh, Lord, boy. I don't know, man. I just was feeling it. I said, oh, Lord, here we go again. There we go. Let's just watch this poison just stand up in front of me, look me straight in my face, and tell these vicious lies. And then you can tell me you're praying for me. Man, stop it. The Holy Spirit tell you pray for me and you never came to visit me? The Holy Spirit had you in my you fast and stuff and you was calling my name to the throne room of God and God at no point say go check on Kevin. Go check see if Kevin ain't commit suicide. Go check see if he hang himself or shot himself in the head. Your teacher like you said. So the Holy Spirit tell you all of that but never once say to you go check on him. Go pick up the phone and call him. You got his number? When you need something from him, you know how to reach him. You come by his house. But I wasn't mad at them, man. I wasn't mad at them. Honestly, I wasn't. But I was mad when it was the lies. I, I just got tired of playing church. Well, I wasn't playing it. They were. And I wasn't into that. All right? I wasn't into that foolishness. So listen to this now. The scripture goes on to say here in verse 31, Behold, I am against the prophets, said the Lord, that used their tongue and say he said. Verse 32, Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams. You hear that? He said, I'm against them. You hear that? I'm against them with these false dreams. They're lying. They're telling you God's sake. I see where God says, uh, I see where uh, uh, fire and brimstone is going to be rained on America. I hear God says that America is the hallowed. I hear God says that a tsunami coming to the Bahamas. Now, these some of these things may be true. But like I say, though, use as a benchmark this person. This was what, what 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 are their beliefs? What what are they who is sponsoring them spiritually? This is what I'm saying to you. Because I told you the difference between one who have true dreams and excuse me, visions from God and those who are false dreamers is that the one who is of God will always point you in the direction of God. And whatever they say will be lined up with scripture. Those who are not will always try their best to deceive you initially and ultimately to pull you away from the things of God and advising you and encouraging you to do things that is totally against the scriptures. God says somebody is trying to work witchcraft on you. I see the people on the job, they are against you. God say to tell you to go get a bottle of oil. And he says, now go down by the graveyard and flip it in your hand four times and then walk out backward. And when you get home, you rub your door with it or put a red cloth around it. And God says, the enemy you see today, you will see no more. Really? And that's, that's the dream you had about me? And that's the advice God gave you in the dream. Where is it in scripture? That's all I'm asking you. Show it to me in the scriptures. I'm confused. You ain't going to find it there. So he says here, behold, I am against, verse 32 of Jeremiah 23. Behold, I'm against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them. And listen, listen what the false dreams are doing, and this is why he's so angry with it. They are causing my people to err, E-R-R, -R, circle that word. I love it. What does that word mean? The word err in the Hebrew, I, do, I cannot pronounce or remember the actual Hebrew word, but the word err er here, err here doesn't just mean to make a mistake. This word in its original uh, Hebrew uh, etymology or the root of that word, it means to not only make a mistake, but the one who made the mistake to turn them in the opposite direction of where they were going. So he says, why he's against the false dreamers and he's putting them in the same category as the false prophet is because they're diverting the destiny, the God intended destiny of an individual, of a group of a congregation. And this is why he has such an issue with it that he's mentioning it in Jude, mentioning it in Jeremiah. 
These people are slow belly devils because ultimately, like I said, their job is to deceive you and ultimately pull you away from the things of God. But they don't come in right away and do it. They, they literally set up their infrastructure by originally going along with your rules and your policies. But now they begin to introduce lasciviousness, meaning that they're going to bring in stuff there that is against the word of God. But stuff that will appeal to you. Well, you know, pastor, you could get more money, you know, if you have the church, so a special offering every end of the month. They even give you some scriptures too, would have nothing to do with it, but you can twist it up and these are the possible. Like, boy, that's true now. I mean, if we get this amount here, then we can finish off that wing over here and get the church bus. We always want it. But what he doesn't realize is this guy is setting up a demonic platform because ultimately the overall plan is we want people not to trust in the word of God. We don't want them to look at that as the ultimate answers and remedies and solutions. No, what we want you to do is put your faith and confidence in mammon. Put your faith and confidence that if you sow the right seed, there's a protection over you from this church, from this ministry. If you sow the right seed, God is going to bless you. If you want the blessing that we just told you, we saw in a dream about you, then God's saying to, re to, to get that, you have to sow the seed, listen, for him to release this blessing to you. They are here already. They are performing all over the world. But if nobody is teaching you how to recognize and identify them, you will also be part and parcel in giving your monies to these slow belly devils. And my teaching is to show you how to recognize such people whose intent ultimately is to deceive you and pull you away from God. Scripture. So he says in verse 32 of Jeremiah 23, Behold, I'm against them that prophesy false dreams, say the Lord, and do tell them, do tell the dreams that is, and cause my people to err, cause them to make mistakes and say, man, I'm messing up. And rather than going in the direction of God, you're going in the opposite direction. So you see, their false dreams and prophecies weren't just games they were playing with you. They came with an action plan. And if you were to bite into that, it's going to divert you from your God-ordained destiny. He said, and cause my people to err by what? By their lies and by their likeness. Yet I send them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit. Listen now, they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. The word profit there is not P-R-O-P-H-E-T, as in talking about a person who foresees the future. He's saying that these false dreamers and false prophets will cause you through their deception not to profit. What does the word profit mean? The word profit means to increase, means to add to what's already there. For example, if I bought this pen for a dollar, okay, but I sold it to someone for two dollars, I have made a profit or an increase of a dollar. The scripture is telling us that when we follow these false prophets, they will cause us not to profit. Well, who's going to be the ones profiting? Them. And their profit is immediate. Ain't no waiting for them. You got to wait, but not them. God says, if you release that in 60 days, watch how far they go. God says, in 90 days, this is going to happen. But we want our profit now. God says, if we sow that seed of $2,000 now, because we want our profit up in here today, we, we ain't trusting you. Give us that profit now. But your profit can come in 60 days, 90 days. So by then, they must see up in Mars somewhere where you'll never find them. And if you come back and say, well, pastor, profit, 90 days done gone, and I don't see it. My child, I didn't want to tell you this. I didn't want to say this when I first prophesied to you, but there's sin in your life. <laughs> and now you can yuck the scriptures out. The Bible say, he that hideth his sin shall not prosper. It's not my word, my child. It's not my word. It's, your, it's, it's the word of God. I did my part, and I prayed for you. I said, Lord, I pray that you would break that thing in our life. I didn't want to mention it in front of everybody, but I'm telling you, get your heart right. Oh, wow. So why didn't you tell me this this, 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 this disclaimer when I was bringing my $1,000 seed? Why didn't you say, hey, 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 I see you're humble and obedient and you submit to the man of God. But I'm going to tell you right now, if there's sin in your life, this blessing would not come even though you sow in the seed. Why didn't you tell me about the fine print writing when I followed the instruction? How come I'm just hearing it now? 
now that your false prophecies didn't come to pass. The Bible says that they have crept in unawares. Hello, Jude 1 verses 4. That's what I'm reading. So he says here, and by their likeness, yet I send them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all. Nobody will profit. Nobody will P-R-O-F-I-T from a false P-R-O-P-H-E-T slash dreamer. Same thing. False and filthy dreamers are the exact same people as false prophets. Jeremiah 29. We're wrapping up right here. Jeremiah 29. And I just, I'm giving you the scriptures. Don't get mad at me. Get mad at the scriptures. We're going to read from verse 8 to verse 10. Listen to what it's saying here, here. Jeremiah 29, verse 8. For thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners. Diviners are those who deal with our, who deal with our, what's the word I'm looking for you now? Who do deals with uh, speaking to spirits through divination. So, Divine, the, the, a diviner would be the noun or the person to the one who does divination. This is the person who communicates with the spiritual world negatively from the demonic kingdom through divination. So he says, here, for thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you. Okay, watch this now. Neither hearken or listen to their dreams. Listen to their dreams, which ye cause to be dreamed. If you're waking for the devil, then who do you think are sponsoring these dreams? So you wake up and the mother devil say, now go tell Kevin, tell Kevin that God is getting ready to bless him. But while you are on here to, on the way to tell him that, you heard in your spirit, all of this is coming from the deceitful heart, you heard sacrifice. You heard sacrifice. So this is all a part of the game. And I said, Holy Spirit, what what you mean by sacrifice, Holy Spirit? He said, tell Kevin he got to give up something he loved in exchange for greater. Okay, Holy Spirit. So you come and you tell me. And the Holy Spirit just told me, Kevin, he said, in case you have a problem with what that is, the Holy Spirit says you got to take all of your money off your bank account. Remember, sacrifice. Give up something you you love in order to get something greater. <laughs> when you hear a voice go on, oh, you're getting robbed, buddy. <laughs> you're getting robbed full time. You're going to do it. Why? Because they're not just going to come arbitrarily and tell you that they've already went through the motions with this. This has now become a part of the program because all along they were telling you, they were selling miracles all along. They were selling breakthroughs. They were selling blessings. So now they're not doing nothing different. The only different thing is that they're asking you for a greater amount now and to make a greater sacrifice. But they've been doing this all along. So the truth is, there's really nothing for you to wrestle about. And when they see you kind of wrestling with it, they said, remember now, remember the seeds you've sown before. You've already planted in good ground. So remember now, in the future, you're going to see these things come up. And remember, if you sow bountifully, you will reap. See, they can give you the scriptures now, but this have to do with their deception. So you say, okay, you know what? This is the man of God. You know, we must respect. The Bible says, uh, obey God, be established, obey the prophet, and you shall prosper. So you you, 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 help, you even helping him out in your mind with your scriptures. Dismissing all of what I'm telling you here, because nobody's going to tell you this, especially if they deceive so it, because this here will bring their dirt to the surface. So this is what we now use as the benchmark. This is what we use to see what they're all about. And you've had this. You've had this done and you, this, listen, this is increasing so much, so much. This is increasing that it's almost unbelievable that people actually sit down and buy into this. And they're going to do it because the way, I don't know if they teach people this in Bible school now, I, I don't know. But the, 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 to get away with this, you have to, the first strategy is to cause them to love the pastor, cause them to fall in love, cause them to idolize the pastor, give them very little word and give them all of pastor words. And when they reference, reference pastor, never God, never the scriptures. Whenever you're defending, you defend us. So when I get up on the pulpit, I'm going to make you feel extra special. I just want to say Mary or Dale. <laughs> Mary, love our pastor, Mike. <laughs> Mary, listen, God is going to bless you, Mary. 
Mary, that Rolls Royce you bought for me. I, I, you know I've been before the throne room of God bringing you before God's grace because of the sacrifice. So Mary can always feel compelled to give this clown because he's now marketing up. And the whole idea is so y'all, y'all take note of how Mary treat me, okay? And y'all do likewise. Now, if you came here looking for God, you come to the wrong place. You can't, unless your God is me, that's the only way it can wake up in here. So you sow into my life, and now God is going to release these things. But there's no scripture to support it. No scripture at all to support it. So Mary, grinning from cheek to cheek, she got a $2,000 bank note to pay for this car, okay, for this man. And she thinks she's making some great sacrifice to God through this uh, uh, prophet of Baal over here. They already here. You only listen to me. They already here. They've already crept in unawares, according to Jude chapter four. They are. They're not trying to get here. You know, they are here already, and they're coming through with these prophetic dreams and so on that has nothing to do with God. And you know what? Too, I'm not going to be sorry for you when you buy into it, because what it's telling me, you honor them more than you honor God, and you scared to call them up because they got you threatened and treating you like a. They 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 bullying over your life, but they ain't gonna bully over Kevin. Like tell you that right now. So watch this now. He says here. In verse 8, for thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to their dreams which you cause to be dreamed. Verse 9 of Jeremiah 29, for the prophecy, sorry, for they prophesy falsely unto you in my name or the name of the Lord. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. I don't know these people. I don't know why these people come to you talking nonsense. Why are you listening to them? Because they have trained you to worship them. They have trained you to fear them. They have trained you that if you say anything against them, touch not God's anointed. Let God judge them. You shouldn't put your tongue on them. Don't touch them. But that is not what the scripture is saying. Because the scripture is giving me all of the identifiers to run from them. Watch in verse 10. For thus said the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you, in the call and cause you to return to this place. So let me just give you a synopsis of this entire scripture. The, the children of Israel at this time, under their prophet or man of God, Jeremiah, God has caused them to go into the Babylonian captivity. And he told them for 70 years, this is going to be. So he said, you know what? Start planting seeds and corn and doing your harvest. Start getting married, doing live regular because you're on lock here for 70 years. So he's telling the children of Israel through Jeremiah, any prophet come here to you and tell you they had a dream or tell you they had a prophecy where God says, next year this time, we're going to be in our own land. Next year this time, I see God sending a deliverer. He said, they're all liars. I've never sent them because I've already told you through my servant. And even in advance of all of this happening, I told you this was going to happen. You were going to be in, 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 in Babylonian bondage for 70 years. That's it. So he reiterates this in verse 10. He says, verse 10 of Jeremiah 29, for thus said the Lord that after 70 years be accomplished, meaning you ain't coming up before then, after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you in, in causing you to return to this place. So you see what he's telling him, right? So whoever comes here, this is the benchmark. And if what they're saying does not match but I'm telling you, you're going to be here for 70 years. I did not send this fool. I did not send this clown. I did not send this circus performer. I did not send this actor. So no matter how they come to you in this monkey suit, acting as if they're of me, he says, I did not send them. So if you believe them more than you believe me, then whatever happens to you by them, that on you. Because you've been warned, you've been told, do not listen to these jokers. Do not listen to these sales agents and marketing agents of Satan. Do not. All right? Jeremiah 14, verse 14. What does it say here? Jeremiah 14, verse 14. I love this. Listen to what it says. Then the Lord said unto me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. What is these people's problem? I send them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spoke unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination. When you see that word, it means that 
who is backing what they're telling you? Who is the source of them spiritually? The kingdom of darkness. Because divination have to do with communication between familiar spirits and false prophets, false dreamers, and, and so on. So there's a spirit that's telling them superficial stuff. Uh, Kevin got a pink uh, uh, shirt on underneath this. Oh my God, yeah. When it's always superficial. Man of God, to prove to you, to prove to you, I'm, I'm from God. Now, I cannot see you having a long sleeve shirt and a jacket, but God is showing me there's a tattoo on your right arm up in this area right here. Come on, you really believe God? You really believe God that weak? That he have to convince you when you see those things, they are agents of the devil. God never send them. God, tell me you got a pair of brown socks on. Glory be to God. I hear God say that your car have four wheels. How would I know that? Have we met before? Do you know me? How do I know you got four tires on your car? Maybe because that's the only way it's going to move. <laughs> so what I'm saying to you, this is how you know they're not real. Any preacher, any prophet, any whoever is trying to convince you that is God speaking. The mere fact that they're trying to convince you, stop listening to them. Stop listening to that person. God will never do that. And to prove it to you, from Genesis to Revelation, every prophet of God, everyone, Nehemiah, Amos, Zechariah, uh, Hosea, Nahum, Obadiah, every prophet. There is no prophet in the scriptures, not one that you could show me. That when God sent him to prophesy to whatever that that prophet says now to prove to you that God sent me. You are wearing sandals on your feet with the lace all the way up to your knee. Why? Why would God do that? Why would God have to stoop to human level basically begging you to believe that I'm God? God is trying to convince you that I'm God, but that isn't what the scripture says. The scriptures are clear. Uh, Hebrews 11 verse 6. Those that come to God, they must believe that he is God. Not him trying to convince you that he is God. Read the scriptures. But you wouldn't know that if you don't know the scriptures. So why is this joker trying to convince me to prove to you, to prove to you that I'm hearing from God? Outside, there's a sky. How would I know that? How would I know that there's a sky if I'm in here? If I'm in here, see the spirit on me right now. If I'm in here, how would I know that there's a sky out there? And if, if I'm out, out there, that's God speaking to me. Now God said, give me all of your money. You take all of your fixed accounts and bring it here to me. I've just proved to you that I'm, 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 I'm operating under God. Go, listen to me carefully. Go anybody who tell you and trying to convince you that they are of God by telling you what color car you have, what is your phone number, what street address. This is what people who operate under divination do because there's a familiar spirit speaking to them. This is not of God. I dare any human being who know the scriptures. Show me one scripture, one, just one, one scripture where the prophet of God who was sent by God to give a prophecy went through one of those theatrics. Tell me, tell me, I hear God say to prove to you that I'm from God. God showed me that you at some point in your life you were swimming in the sea on the beach. Am I a man of God? Am I telling you the truth? Yeah, 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 sir, that's, that's true. I'm going to go deep. When you went in the water, you got wet. Do I know you? Have we met before? Did you or did you not get wet? <laughs> so, so what I'm saying to you, I love it. What I'm saying to you, and I, I want you to see how silly you look when these liars was telling you this nonsense. 
How could I not get where if I go to war? Tell me, make me understand this. I tell you, boy, this, this, listen to me. And I, 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 I poke fun at this because I'm trying to show you. I'm trying to show you. These people are praying that you don't know the scriptures. They are hoping that you do not know the word of God. And you're going to take what they say and never match it with the word of God. God, show me when you came out of the water. Water was dripping from you. Hallelujah. How have we met before? Did I see you on the beach? Now, how would I know that at some point in your lifetime, you were in the water? How would I know that? Right, how would you know that? Yeah, that, that's true. That's you. You're quick. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, I should just give you all my money now, right? That's what you want, right? <laughs> devil. Get out of here, you devil worshiper. For the Lord, listen to this, Jeremiah 14, verse 14. Then the Lord said unto me, the prophet prophesies lies in my name. I send them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spoke unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing of naught, meaning it will come to nothing, and the deceit of their heart. Scripture. Let's go to our last scripture, Zechariah 10, verses 1 to 2. Zechariah 10. Now, for those of you who don't know what Zechariah is, just before you got to Malachi. I didn't know where it is either. I'm going to lie to you. I had to go on the contents thing. All right, Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 10. And we're going to read from verse 1 to 2. This is our final scripture. What does it say? It says in Zechariah 10, verses 1 to 2, Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. Listen to verse 2 of Zechariah 10. For the idols have spoken vanity, nonsense. And the diviners uh -huh, have seen a lie and have told, what did they, they told what? False dreams. That's what I'm reading. That's what I'm reading. That's what I'm reading. They have told false dreams. They comfort in vain. Therefore, they went their way as a flock. They were troubled because there was no shepherd. So what it's saying is that the shepherd here would be the pastor. The shepherd would be the man of God that was, in, that was supposed to be in place. For some reason, they got rid of him, like, but I, and I know how they did it too. I know just how they do it, but the same strategy. You creep in unawares. They don't know who you are. They don't know you were studying their sanctuary for, for months, for years. They don't know you used to be popping in and out of church. They would say, man, he finally come. I wonder who this man is. Who this old lady is? And all of a sudden, now they want to be a part of the membership because the Lord has settled them right there. They were going from church to church, and, and this is where they feel that the spirit of the Lord is. The, in the book of Proverbs, it says, be careful of those who are constantly flattering you. Scripture. And the Lord sent me to this place. And, and they're going to be extremely submissive. Why? Because Jesus said they are wolves and what? Sheep clothing. They can never come out and tell you, hey, I'm a devil. I am strictly from the kingdom of darkness. In fact, I'm a general in Satan's army. They're going to never tell you that. Because that will blow their whole plan. Because to remember, it's all about deception. It's all about deceiving these people. Telling them lies. Telling them that, hey, look, God gave me a dream about you and this church. And that's what they're going to do eventually, Pastor. I've been coming to this church for a while. I'm going to be honest with you. But I've been going to other churches. And I was saying, Lord, please direct me to the right church. And one day I had a dream. Watch the flattery. In this dream, Pastor... And I'm a dreamer. In this dream, I saw you on high. But I also saw some people trying to pull you down. And the Lord spoke to me and told me that there's some people in here who's trying to usurp your authority. Now, that's in every church. That's in every organization. But he know, he know these are the things that you say. But God showed me that the more that they try to reach for you, the higher he's going to elevate you. Pastor, I'm going to tell you this. The Lord said to me, the enemies you see today, you will see no more. Pastor, I don't know if that for you. I just tell you what I dream. So pastor now, like, now we need to get this fellow on board here. Yeah. We need to get you on board. So you interpret dreams too? Yeah, yeah, pastor. But I don't, you know, I don't like the limelight, you know. No, man. No, man. Remember the Bible saying, you know, let your light shine. Okay, come on now. You're going to come on. See, this guy know how to play it. He know. Next thing, you know, guess what? He's assistant pastor. He, he's assistant pastor now. But he's playing two sides of the fence. When he gets his opportunity to meet with the congregation or meet with the crowd or have these meetings, he's gonna he's gonna subtly poison the minds of those against that same leader who put him on the platform. Yeah, 
Please can do it subtly. And you know he's going to start off? Now we need to do a, 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 a appreciation service for pastor. Be like, yeah, man, he's going to big pastor up in the beginning, you know. Oh, yeah, because he has an agenda. And the agenda is I need to deceive you all. But before I can deceive you all, because I know you all don't fully trust me. I know you all commitment to him. So I need to get you all on board by making it look like I for him too. So we're going to get on board. We're going to have an appreciation, a surprise appreciation service. And we're going to go all out. We're going to get the limousine, the red carpet, the works, hotel room for him and his wife, all of that. All of this is in an effort to convince you that I'm for him. And this is how they're going to move most of their way in. The Bible is clear. They have already, not they will, they have already crept in unawares. I am speaking to somebody tonight. All right? And you are a part of a congregation, and everything that I've said tonight is exactly what you're dealing with right now. But you don't want to leave. You know why you don't want to leave? Because now through this teaching, you realize that you are really caught up in that particular culture they got there, where you feel that you cannot leave because of you, even though God been telling you to leave for a while, even though every time you flick on the TV, and you turn to some Christian program, it's telling you over and over, it's preaching about false prophet. They're talking about wicked men. And this is just another confirmation for you. But what's keeping you there is that they have convinced you that if you come from under their spiritual covering, if you come from under pastor, you will never prosper in life. Now, even though you've never seen this in the scripture, it, it is so indoctrinated into your cerebral that you're there because of fear. You see all the errors. Even before you listen to me tonight, you all I'm doing is confirming what you saw already. And God been telling you, 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 get out of this place. You need to leave from here. You will never prosper as long as you're here because I am not in this place. I have nothing to do with this place. Everyone that has ever mounted this pulpit, everyone that speaks from here are all liars because they are all actors and actresses. They're hypocrites. And that's what a hypocrite is, an actor. Now you have a choice now. You have a choice because this is only one of many confirmations you've had. You can remain there. You can remain there. But don't expect what God has ordained for you to erupt from there or to come from there. Your time there has already been exhausted. You should have left a long time ago. You're delayed in life because you're at a place that you should have never, well, no, I didn't say never been before because you were there for a particular period. And you know the time when you were supposed to leave, but you never left. You never left. As a result of that, it has affected every area of your life. Things that you should have already accomplished, promotions you should have already received, advancement that you should have already had, all have been delayed, but you would have never connected to this den of devils that you are part of. You were there to only see what so-called men and women of God are like that are not of God. That was your lesson there. It was time for you to move. So like I said, you could stay there. You could stay save face or stay in fear, okay? But it'll be to your own detriment. So my advice to everyone listening to me tonight, God is real. And you shouldn't let someone paint a picture of who God is to them. Read the Bible. Where do I constantly point you to? The scriptures. Why do I saturate every one of my teachings with scriptures? Because I don't want you to be interested in me. I want you to be interested in the word of God. A true man or woman of God will always point you to the word of God. A true man or woman of God, they will always make reference. They will always direct you to God's word. They're never trying to inflate them or make you believe that if you give to them or if they pray for you, it was only when they pray for you, things will change in your life. No, things will change in your life when you pray and believe God's word as to what he's saying about your situation. Not because Kevin prayed for you. No. The Constitution says, whatever you shall ask in my name, which is Jesus, shall be done for you. Not Kevin's name. I could assist you. I could go into intercession and pray with you. I could do that. But don't ever believe that because apostle so-and-so prayed, because so-and-so prayed. No. The Scripture says, according to your faith, faith again, what is the Word of God? According to your belief of God's Word as it relates to your situation, then be it unto you. But don't ever fool yourself that if I can only reach a hold of Kevin, if I can only get a hold of T.D. Jakes right now, well, what can happen when you can't get a hold of them? So tell me something. When So the whole government and staff of heaven, in terms of manifesting for you, 
are all shut down because Kevin on vacation with his wife somewhere. And we got to wait for Kevin to come back. Got to wait for him to come back so he can access the throne room of God, which you also have access to. But you believe that your idol Kevin, or whoever else leader you have, that if I if 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 only could Kevin could, could sneak a prayer into God for me, because I know God can favor him and hook me up. That isn't what I'm reading, man. That's not what the scripture is reading. I don't know who's teaching you people these things. The scriptures are clear. When Jesus Christ died, okay, the veil was torn in the temple. There's no more division. There's no more going through those sacrifices. There's no more atonement. There's none of that. You come directly, any one of you come before God repentance and so on and state your case. You don't need Kevin. You don't need Tom. You don't need Mary. But why am I bringing this up? Because it seems as if I have nothing to do. Well, it have everything to do with this because the scripture I read it for you in, I read it for you in Jude. Jude 1 verse 4. In fact, I won't, let me turn it back there because I won't read it right. Jude chapter 1 verse 4. Listen to what it says here. He says, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of all ordained or commissioned or assigned to this condemnation. And who are they? They are ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the ultimate goal. And then again, he gives you the examples of how they're going to go about this. So I'm saying to you, listen to me carefully tonight. Listen to me carefully tonight. Anyone come talking fool, but God give you a dream about, give them a dream about you or give them a dream about your church. I ain't saying dismiss them, you know, l l listen to, listen to it, but I, let's see if it's lining up. Let's see if it's lining up with the word of God. Let's see, because don't tell me God showed you a dream about me or about my church or about my pastor, or about a ministry or so. And we're not saying that these dreams are not right. But what I'm saying to you, a part of your assessment and an, an, an analysis is to use the benchmark with the word of God. Why are you always having these dreams? God say, he showed you something about me. He showed me getting a new car. He showed you getting a promotion. But I know what's going on in my life. I know I'm not living right. I know I cannot stand my wife. I cannot stand my mother. I cannot, all of these things you got going on in your life. But how, and God showing you this dreams where I'm going to become rich and have condominiums and, and property and real estate. But what about these basic things that get me into the kingdom? He blinded. He can't see that. So that right there should be telling you. You're telling me God is going to reward me with all of this wealth, all of this long life and caviar and steak and uh, sushi. <laughs> but the only qualifier here is I must continue living in my sin. Oh, no, boy, don't try that. No, no. So I'm telling you tonight, all right? Be careful. Be be very, because the world, and Jesus, the Bible says this. It says in the last days, there'll be many false prophets, many of them out there. And I, I already laid out their plan of action. Their plan of action is to lure you in, okay? Satan never jump up to Eve and say, look, I am the devil, and I'm here to deceive you and to take everything away from you. No, no, you will never succeed doing that. What do you do? You make it look as if you're looking out for them. You make it look as if you care about them. You make it look like somebody else in authority, such as a God, is keeping stuff back from them. God don't want you for your eyes to be open. That's why he don't want you to eat of this fruit. Because the day you eat of this fruit, you'll be just like him. You'll be able to create like him. And do all kinds of super stuff just like him. Super duper this, you can do all that. But he will never tell you. But if he does though, you know I have the right to take everything from you. You know you're going to be kicked out of this garden. You know you're going to have pain and childbirth. And you know Adam is going to have to tell the ground. And you know God is going to curse you. No, why would I tell you that? Because if I tell you that, you will never do what I'm telling you to do. You will never be deceived by me if I tell you the truth. So what I, this is what I'm telling you about these false dreamers and prophets. What we are trained to do is to tell you the nice things you want to hear. Because everybody is financially challenged. Everybody have enemies on the job. Everybody have family problems. Everybody at one point had a problem with their car and, and whatever. So you you just capitalize on these things. And I see God says that there's some people on the job who don't like you. And they're jealous of you. Because it will make you feel special now. They're jealous of you. But I see God is pushing them aside. 
God is pushing them aside and God is going to elevate you. I see that too. I don't know, but I see, I don't know where you live now, but I see like a four bedroom, four bath upstairs. That's what I see. And I see a beach. Okay. God says he's getting ready to transition you from where you are to where you're going to be. That's what I'm seeing. And he's going to throw some scriptures. No, I have nothing to do with this. I hear God says that you don't put new wine in old wine skins. Got nothing to do with what he's talking about. Hallelujah. And I hear God says that a part of this transition, I hear God says that uh, uh, Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, Jack jump over the candlestick. Hallelujah. That's what I'm hearing right now. That's what I'm hearing. Okay. I know it don't make no sense right now, but Jack be nimble. All right. That's all you need to worry about right now. Now go, God says, go research that, go Google that, and he's going to speak to you in codes. No, no. When I was ignorant, I would have listened to you. In fact, I would have given you all my money years ago because I, I, I love stuff like that. And even though my life was showing that none of what you said ever came to pass, but yet like a dummy, I continued to follow them. Well, that don't happen anymore. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this people. I thank you for your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding. As usual, God, I thank you for the gift of teaching that you've given me and that I have such a platform to display your gift by bringing people to you, by directing people to you, by pointing people to you. Every one of our gifts in its essence is to direct people to you. I pray right now that they, they will now go over this video, go over the notes, and now begin to analytically look at their lives and the people that they submit to, the organizations in terms of religion that they submit themselves to, and really be real and honest with themselves and say to, my, say to themselves, hey, you know what? This is what the Word of God says, but this is what this person says. But here is the catcher. Father, I pray that they will have more fear for you, okay? The eternal God than a mere mortal in whom they have been trained to fear and to dismiss you. I pray for those who have been prophesied to, and none of those prophecies were from God. None of the false dreams that was conveyed to them was not of you. Father, I join my faith with theirs right now breaking the evil covenants that they became a part of when they subscribe to those particular demonic dreams, visions, and prophecies. I pray, Lord, as you release them, because in their signing on to those things, they have automatically allowed restrictions and limitations to be set in their lives. Lord, release them right now. Release their minds, just like with Simon of Samaria, who bewitched the people. This is what these false dreamers and filthy dreamers and false prophets do. When people uh, come to them, the first thing they do is bewitch their minds, grab a control of their minds to cause these people to submit to them. Father, it is my prayer that you will release them mentally, release them emotionally, release them financially, release them physically from every spell, hex, incantation, and whatever it is that has tied them to these people, through these uh, uh, diviners, through these people who are uh, committed to divination, uh, accessing the demonic spiritual world through evil powers. Father, release your people. Now I pray, Lord, that you would infuse them with your wisdom, with your knowledge, with your understanding, with your insight. And I pray, Father God, and my, my greatest prayer, outside of the prayer of salvation, of course, is that they find and discover what they are called to do, who and what they are called to be. And like myself, that they would get on board and begin moving in their gift, whether it's teaching, preaching, singing, giving, whatever it is that you've called them to do, Lord. Help them to discover that. And now, Lord, advance them to where they should have been at this stage in their lives. Make up for the lost time. In fact, you said you will do it. You said in Joel 2 and 25 that, that you will restore them the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, the locust, and the palm worm has eaten away. The years that the enemy has stolen, the years that they should have been plowing the fields and bringing souls to the kingdom of God, they were being bamboozled, they were being run amok and made a fool out of through these false prophets, teachers, pastors, apostles, bishops, these workers of iniquities, these slow belly devils 
that your word clearly states that their method of operation is to uh, sheepishly come into the flock with the sole intent of deceiving them and ultimately misleading them. I pray, Father God, that these devils will be exposed. But I pray for their salvation also. I pray for their salvation. I pray that these people will come to the knowledge that one day, hey, look, we got to give an answer to this stuff. We need to stop doing this. We need to repent before God and stop deceiving the people of God. I pray right now, Father God, Lord, that they would see the bigger picture and, 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 and break free of the spell that Satan has bound the men to only focus on the material things that, the, that this deception is bringing to them, that this deception is causing them to engage. And I pray for those, Father God, who have suffered so much losses. They've given their time, they've given their energy, and most of all, they've given their resources. They've given their commitment to people who do not care about them because the hearts of these people are, are, are deceitful above all things and desperately wicked always waiting for another opportunity from the enemy to produce in the lives of the people of God. I pray right now, Lord, that they would wake up, just like how you woke me up, to see it for what it really is, in spite of how much of them I, you love, we love. Father, we have to see it for what it really is, and that we cannot be no longer a part of this bandwagon, a part of this charade, a part of this, this Hollywood performance. Because the ultimate thing is, we will have to stand before you one day. That's a reality. We're seeing it every day. People are dying every day. And while they may no longer exist here physically, they are existing in another place. It is my prayer that none of us will leave here so deceived that we did not truly make it right with you. We made it right with the pastor, right with the teacher, right with the preacher. We did everything. We submitted everything they asked us to do even when it came to going against your word. Not only did we, do, did we do it, but we defended their stance on going against the scripture. We honored them and we dismissed you, not knowing that we were in full-fledged idolatry. We were in full-fledged worshiping the creation as opposed to the creator. Father, forgive us. Forgive us for this evil. Forgive us for this, this evil act of idolatry, that because of it, You've, we've allowed through the law to introduce into our families an evil generational curse where you said that if we worship any other God for you, I jealous God, that you will visit the iniquities upon our current children in at minimum to the third and fourth generation. So Father God, we pray tonight that you will expunge our records because we confess to you the wickedness that we have done. We have worshiped religious leaders. We have bowed before them. We have called them spiritual fathers. We, well, not we, but them, have volunteered to be their spiritual sons and daughters. This is no way in your word. No, you want us to worship you. You you didn't ask for all of these hurdles for us to jump over. You want a relationship with us. You want us to come boldly before your throne. You want us to, to make you priority, not someone that you put in place to train and point us to you. Instead, they pointed us to themselves. So, Father, we bless you. Father, we honor you. Father, we praise you. Father, we glorify you. We pray, Father God, Lord, everyone that has laid hands on us, every oil that we've placed upon us, every miracle water that we have drank, every miracle pulse, every miracle hand, shoulder bag, and socks and shoe, every nonsense that we've taken from these people, and we've replaced it with the word of God. Forgive us. Forgive us for being ignorant. Forgive us for being bewitched. Forgive us, Father God, for indulging in things that your word never said to do. Never. You want us to put our confidence in you. You said that healing is the children's bread. You said, listen, you said you've sent your word to heal us. Not miracle oil, not miracle cloth, not Jesus glove, not Jesus Kool-Aid. You have sent your word to heal us. You said you, you God, you are our Jehovah Rapha, not springs water from Russia, not uh, miracle scarves. No, you, 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 you said according to our faith, be it unto us, not according to our faith in a miracle pen, not our quantity of faith in a miracle cup of water. No, 
you said in your word that wherever two of us touching anything on this earth shall ask of your Father which is in heaven, in your name, Jesus, it shall be done unto us. That's what your word. Your word did not say that whoever sow a seed into your kingdom, in your name, you will give us the blessing. You've never said that. They are all lies. We dismiss it. And for those of us who engage in it, we engage in demonic activities, and we repent of that right now. Forgive us, God. Now help us through your Holy Spirit to follow your laws, follow your protocols for our healing, for our deliverance, for our breakthroughs, to break our children from drugs and bad relationships. And God give us, or not give us because you've given it to us already, but help us to always put your word above Kevin, above T.D. Jakes, above jo whoever we admire as spiritual leaders. Father, let your word be our compass. Let your word be our GPS system. Let the word of God be the only thing that we use, no matter how much we love our spiritual leaders. Let that be the final and the only authority. And any preacher that is going against the word vehemently to push their own agenda, then according to your word, what I'm reading here in Jude 1 verse 4, for they are certain men crept in unawares who were before of all ordained for this evil. They are ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. They denied you when they went against the laws of God and implemented their own. So Father, we bless you. Father, we honor you. Father, we praise you. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, folks, that is it for me tonight. I want to thank everybody that made a donation to the to the, uh, the chat thing there. Thank you very much. And I pray that this teaching was informative for you. Uh, I know it was pretty late, but I had to break it all down so that you would understand it. Go over it, take the notes, read the scriptures. The revelation don't stop at when I stop. God will give you more revelation when you go into the scriptures, okay? So you guys have a wonderful morning, evening, good night. God bless you, and I will see you on my next episode.